I fumbled through that, but we're here. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Small That's Mouth Crush Live. How are you? I'm doing well. Nice, man. How What's are new? you? What's new? Oh, we got a lot to talk about. We do, man. I was involved in a little controversy today, man. Okay. People okay. are trying to smear my reputation. About what? I attended an Instagram Live today, man. And? On tackle, tackle Craft, man. You could watch it on YouTube. And, man, they were trying to drag me through. The TK was happy. That's why I'm wearing the t the Tackle Craft hat, man. I'm gonna. Huh. So if anybody was on the, the stream, don't don't ruin it. But, Travis, you've seen this bait before. It's not the actual one. But what it was during our first of the seven days of streaming live, I, I held up this bait, and people accused me of fishing this thing and pumping it. Really? And like putting it in my lipless <laughs> professor pack. And like, I was in love with this bait. So most people haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. So some enterprising person on the stream today, which will not be revealed until the end. You have to stay past net to watch. Okay. He clipped a screenshot and everybody goes, there it is. That's proof. And I said, wow. where's the audio evidence? Mm -hmm. Non-doctor. And TK gets the audio going. It's all garbled. I'm going to redeem myself later tonight. There folks. you go. All right. So anyway, love it to the end. And it was a, it was hysterical. Actually. It's, it's going to be a great show tonight. we got over 100 people already. And I'm sure once they get the notifications, we'll get a bunch more guys hit the like button as well. Like and share, like and share. We probably should do a giveaway. I mean, if you don't give away some Neds tonight, it's a crime. I, I don't. You've got the father of the Ned rig on tonight. And okay. you are sitting behind, you are Mr. Ned Rig Jr. <laughs> I mean, it's become your favorite bait, that and the drop shot. So you got to put something together, man. We'll see. We'll see. If not, listen, we got a big couple of weeks. So next week we is do. the Smallmouth Crush VIP. And then the week after that, Monday, October 31st, is our world famous Halloween special, second <laughs> annual Halloween special. And we're going to go real deep on the 31st. So I encourage I mean, you everybody to join us me and scooter could be fishing a championship down in north carolina at lake norman we could join you for the halloween special is that gonna be sunday night or monday ah, night monday yes. night real quick quincy um asked asked travis what's the deal with the lack of podcast over the last two months huh. so quincy i ran out of guests time and energy on the smallmouth crush podcast season two was just every other week and it was a special kind of a uh, continuization of some outside anglers, not just smallmouth anglers, but largemouth anglers as well. Yeah. And I, I was scheduled for the show and I missed it, man. Travis right. ran out again. He said, dude, you're out. I, I recorded, said, I recorded them all back, back this spring. And we literally ran out of guest. And so that's where the podcast sits. It's going to sit in a nice vault where you guys can rewatch all 52 shows of season one. And all roughly 22 shows of season two. So, um, yeah, I, it was a good run. I'm not saying we won't figure something out and maybe do a season three this winter. Maybe what I'll do is just take these lives and create a podcast format. So if you guys want to listen to them on your podcast. There you go. But that's, a, that's um, it an was interesting just, thought. That's an Listen, interesting it, thought. it was a tremendous amount of work and I'm glad I did it 
and we have a great, incredible library of amazing anglers all over the country uh, talking smallmouth fishing as well as largemouth. But um, it was a lot of work, you know, so we got a lot of things moving forward. So there you go. That settles that issue. So I do apologize, but it is the way it is. We um, we just ran out of gas. But we'll continue the live shows every Monday. We're going to be putting up some more smallmouth videos moving forward. I got uh, two or three in the queue right now. I'm just working on editing up, editing a few more uh, actually tonight and tomorrow. So hopefully we'll get those out. And then, of course, um, at the end of the show tonight, I want to ask – I want everyone to kind of put this in the back of their head. If you know anyone that's, that can give you some advice when it comes to ice fishing, we're going to be talking four wheelers versus side by sides, brands, what kind. And then I'm off the drift boat kick. Hmm. What happened? Well, I think I'm going to get into an aluminum boat for steelhead and salmon, as well as perhaps duck hunting. So we're going to talk all about that too. Interesting. It's a lot going on. Just all right, all righty then. Here. I'm I'm looking. I'm I'm talking. I've got it. I'll try to be the moderator today. It's gonna no be hard. Yet. What do you mean? Be hard. I can multitask. What and of course, we're still looking for our uh, an intern. We are. Mm -hmm. So. uh Apply, apply then, at smallmouthcrush.com. Is that where you'd like to? Where do they apply? Yeah, how send do, me an email. How, how do they get in touch with you? Right uh, to your tra website. Travis at smallmouthcrush.com. Bingo. There you go. And maybe we'll get Alex on for the uh, Halloween special. We'll see. We'll see. I miss him already. I miss him already. All right. Without further ado, Eric, if you're ready. Oh, I've been ready. Because we're going to have a very... Uh, very good education when it comes to finesse fishing, I, I believe. Yeah. Let's bring on tonight's guest. There he is. Ned. <laughs> Welcome. It, uh, thank you. Glad to the, be here. The man, the myth, the legend. I love it. <laughs> so we're going to have a lot of comments coming in tonight. Mm -hmm. A lot of questions, I'm sure. If you guys do have questions for Ned, please uh, let us know. He, he cannot see the comments, so what we're going to do is try to post post them up on the screen, or we'll just read them off if anyone has any questions while we get into it. And uh, I'm looking forward to tonight, Ned. Really, I, I am – I love finesse fishing, and obviously you do too, and I, I feel like it's it's one of my strengths. It's, it's a technique that I always uh, find myself using, whether it be a lake that's known for power fishing or a lake that's – known for doing what we do small uh you know small mouth and and finesse fish and things like that um i always find myself kind of gravitating towards those techniques versus others because it's extremely effective not only does it catch numbers of fish but it catches large fish just as well as um as some of the bigger baits and the and the power anglers that are out there so i'd love to hear your take ned on really the history of the ned rig and a little bit of background, if you could, on yourself. Kind of let us know, uh, I guess, just a little bio, if you, if you could. Okay, well, well let's, let's stretch back. I, my, my first time I started fishing was 1948. Uh, I, I grew up in central Missouri in a town called Sedalia, Missouri, which is just north of the Lake of the Ozarks. And it's uh, in the northern section of the Ozark area, which is, you know, embellished with a lot of lot of streams. Uh, we, did, we did a lot of... You know, waiting in the back in those back back in those days, fishing those streams, catching uh, Kentucky bass, which are which which are uh, are are, uh, are one of the primary bass in that stream in those streams, and they had largemouth too, and occasionally some smallmouth bass. And then as I uh, I got older, I uh, started fishing in the boats. Uh, in 1950, my parents went to Minnesota. And I, uh, by the time I was 13 or 14, I, I was, I was, uh, we were going to Minnesota around Nisswa, Minnesota, every uh, every summer for the month of August. And the people that owned this, the resort we went to was uh, Minnewawa Lodge, was uh, run by Fred, uh, Fred Potoff. 
and they asked me to become a guide. And it, and when a guide back in those days, we were we mainly rode boats. You know, we we just got in a boat and we were fishing primarily frogs and hula poppers and uh, and jitterbugs and uh, and baits like that. And yeah. uh, we I fished all around this wall in Brainerd, Minnesota area until about uh, 1958 when I graduated from high school and then I went to college and. Uh, and I, I fished a little bit in college, but it's a little harder harder to do in college than you did when you were in high school and didn't have access to cars back in the 50, 50s, early 60s. And then in the 1960s, I started fishing again. Uh, and uh, I uh, went back to Lake the Ozarks uh, on the weekends and fished uh, in Guido Hibden. I, Guido died here a couple of years ago. Guido yeah. was a, really a, a very famous bass fisherman. And we Heck were... Yeah. We back in the 1960s, we started uh, really actually fishing finesse baits, and actually finesse baits we call it Midwest finesse. It, finesse fishing actually started before in in around the Kansas City area, in the in central Missouri, in Table Rock and Bull Shoals. You know, back in the 1950s, by a guy and guys by the name of Harold Inslee, uh, and, uh, and 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 Bill Ward and his father Virgil Ward. They were really the primary wow. people of using spinning tackle. And the really the godfather of this whole thing was a house painter who lived in Kansas City. And his name is Chuck Woods. And Chuck uh, was one of the first guys to fart back in the 1950s fishing a, a, a jig worm on about a 16th ounce jig head with a, you know, four inch to a five inch worm. And as the day went on, you know, I hit the worm would keep on getting shorter and shorter and shorter <laughs> yeah right and uh he would just bite it off and put put the piece in his pocket and by the end of the day he'd have about a two inch three inch piece of worm left you know That's several amazing. of them and he uh back about 1956 57 58 somewhere in that time span he created what what we call the first cinco which was a beetle and the beetle was a oh yeah was a, was, was a, a fork tail bait which yeah. was what you know, looked like looks like a cinco or looks like a TRD or like a beetle spin. Yeah, like a beetle spin. And he yeah. and he and and Virg, and, uh, and 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 Chuck was uh, really in, really enamored with uh, the uh, spinner on a beetle on a, on the mm -hmm. beetle. He even even fished with Cisco's and 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 uh, Head and Sonics putting in Bayou Boogies. He put a, he put a spinner on that. Too. Oh, you're kidding me? How about uh, that? Yeah, and you know he was he, he was he probably caught more fish in, in north northeastern Kansas than anybody in the history of the world, That's and he so was always crazy. fishing just spinning tackle, you know, yeah. five foot eight uh, spinning rods, and then Virgil, Virgil Ward and uh, Harold Emsley and and and, and Bill Ward uh, got into fishing trout fishing and uh, using uh, a little bit smaller five foot four five foot five uh, spinning rods with. Uh, a four pound test and and mm. bill ward created the very first uh uh, uh marbu jig in oh, about, wow. uh, that was 1958 they were going to harold Lindsley had a fishing show um the sportsman's friend and virgil virgil and harold were kind of somewhat partners on that and uh virgil they were going to go down and fish below bolshells lake on the white river and uh mm. virgil asked bill at the time a uh a, a jig that replicated a a Marlboro streamer, which the fly fishermen were using. Sure. And he came up and he built the, uh, I think it's a, I think it was a one sixteenth ounce. It might have been a one thirty second ounce uh, Marlboro jig, and that was the very first one. And back about nineteen uh, fifty six, fifty seven, fifty, I can't quite remember the date. And that was the very first one. And they shot a TV show, and it went all over the Midwest. And the people down in Omaha. And uh, and uh, up in Omaha and down down in Tulsa saw it and they started making uh, marabou jigs too. So that was the genesis of the marabou jig phenomenon. And then in the '60s, Bill Bill Ward and and uh, and his father Virgil went up. They they had a TV show at that time called Championship Fishing, and went up to uh, Lake of the Woods and started fishing the marabou jig and just catching the deckens out of out of smallmouth bass and wow. walleye and uh, then they used the marabou jig to catch uh, lake trout and they were using a lot, lot heavier ones but you know they're fishing vertically and fishing in 
25 to 60 feet of water at that time, just vertically fishing. But up on on the uh, up when they were at the, on the Lake of the Woods, they were they were fishing, you know, 16th ounce, even smaller, 132nd ounce uh, mm. marabou jigs, and fishing them in shallow water. And that's essentially the very 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 beginning of what we call Midwest finesse. And it, you know, so it's very it interesting. Stretches back to the the 1950s. So the we can go the, on more and more, but that's, oh heck yeah, that's the genesis. Of the worm that he was fishing originally that, you know, the jig worm, because that's yes. the genesis and the, in the origins of the Ned rig, if you will, modern day. Yes, was it a, a, was it a cream scoundrel? What was the uh, worm? It uh, was a uh, American. Uh, oh, wow. The name of that? I can't Not the make, scoundrel. He did use creams. He did. He did. He did use creams, worms, but he, uh, it was a, boy, I got the old man disease. I can't remember. That's, that's okay. I, we can't, can't we can't either. Some, you know, diminishing returns it comes in when you hit your hit your eighties and just, I can't remember people's names and the main name of some of the old baits we used to use too. It's all it good. It. But it, it was there was three baits. You know, a flip tail worm uh, was yeah. oh. a bit later. But yeah. He used a he used a flip tail worm. He got he got a a, a blue one. Oh and, yeah. Uh, he dyed it with 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 with, with a uh, magic marker red and oh, it turned wow. root beer color. How about and let, that? let me tell you, he cut it down to be four inches. So I think all those original flip tails were about seven inches long. Yeah, they were. And he cut it down to about four inches and it was root beer color. And that was the first time we've ever seen that kind of, you know, brown, brownish brown, root beer sure. color. And it was really a very, very effective bait back in those days. Incredible. So how did the Ned get your name? If Virgil well, and, and Harold well, Inslee, how'd that, well, how'd that, how'd that happen? Well, I, I'm kind of embarrassed. I'm, I'm embarrassed by it. I always Why? But, but what happened? Uh, I I I I used to work for In Fishman. I retired in in, two, in 2020 uh, yeah. from that. But uh, Steve Steve Quinn, who, who still still writes for them, uh, sure. he was the guy that called it the Ned Rig because I I was you know I I was fishing back in those days. I was e either a Strike King uh, Zero or a, sure. or a Z or a Z Man Z Man Zinker Z, and we I, those I are remember. five. They're they're both the same bait. You cut them in half. Man made made them makes them for, for, for striking, and it's five inches long. When we cut it that cut it in half, it's two and a half inches long. And so remind me, what was the was the the premier article? I remember reading in In Fisherman magazine. I saw a picture of a zero that had caught probably a couple hundred fish, and it had yeah. been cut in half. Cut and it was all about you know stretching it out. The the more it got chewed up, the more effective it got. Right. Uh, because the, it, you know, because the zero has a lot more salt than the Z-Man does. Salt. Yes. Right. Didn't and it didn't matter what side you used. I think they were using a gopher mushroom head at the time. Right. Right. But they were talking about the extraordinary effectiveness of this Ned rig, and it fascinated me because I used to read your Midwest finesse form. And by the way, guys, that Midwest finesse form, Ned, I think you were with the guy that was the main contributor. Um, you have tons of great. Uh, articles and logs of all your fish catches on that Midwest finesse worm. But anyway, yes. back to the point. The zero was the was the modern day high float uh, Elastec, correct? That was the original Ned, if that you was, will. Yeah, that was the, that was the original one, right? Okay, and that's what I thought. We, I actually, uh, I was when I was writing back in those days, I went down to uh, uh, Table Rock Lake uh, to to do a, a big a kind of a story on. This was this was 2005, okay. 2005, 2006, somewhere around. Yep. There. yep. And I went down and Kevin Van Dam. We did a, was doing Kevin at that time was fishing, I think the shaky head jig, yeah, worm break, you know. And yeah. back in those days, they thought Chuck Woods had been throwing that thing since 1955. Yeah, nothing, everybody, nothing new, right? Everybody yeah, thought, they, thought you know the shaky head was a, a a new new way, you know. No, it was the jig worm. And, yeah, yeah. yeah, so it was, it was the Chuck Woods worm, you know. That's so, right. So, but they got Kevin. Kevin uh, was fishing down in uh, yeah, around Dal Dallas area in a tournament. Uh, can't remember the name. Uh, Living, so I can't remember the name of Lake, but he caught a fourteen-pound bass fishing, uh, you moly. know, a jig worm. And he also fished a uh, a zero. And he gave me a package package of zeros that that when I was down there, he heard me do a little story on him. And sure. so I taught, brought it back to Kansas. And uh, we, at that time, we were still, we were using primarily uh, uh, Gary Yamamoto's uh, Cinco. Yep. You know, and the Cinco is a dynamite little bait, but 
man, it's it. You can you can you can stand maybe catching five fish on it, and that's you have to get another one. So uh, my this, my buddy uh, uh, Dick Bessie, Dick Dick actually uh, unfortunately died a few years ago, but we were fishing oh, a, little, a small community lake south of here, and it was about October twelfth, two thousand and six, uh, and. I said, look what I got these baits here. Maybe we can make them two and a half inches long, which is like a Cinco. And we put yeah. them on a, on a gover head. Yeah. And we fished a little over three hours. And we had 102 largemouth bass, one walleye, and, and two wipers, which is a hybrid between a striper oh, yeah. and a white bass. So, and we still had the same bait on. That's incredible. We, wow. So it was, uh, that, that really started what they call the Ned Rigism, you know, back in the okay. Ned Rigism started. And at that time, and uh, and and I didn't name it, but Steve Quinn was the guy that named it. Steve he, Quinn he from In Fisherman, right? And, okay. And In Fisherman, and and then Z Man called me up one day and asked me if they could use it, and I said no, I didn't want to, but my wife Patty said, sure, let him use it. So I said, Dan, let's use it. So I, you know, I, I'm a journalist. I was a journalist, and I don't work for a, any fishing company. You know, I just right. I thought it might jeopardize my ability to be uh, honest about things so i didn't want really want my name on the bait but you know it's okay it's gone on on long enough now and so sure and i you know i i don't work for z-man but they use this stuff and i use their baits because it's sure they, I, I like them you know but well, sure. ho hopefully you don't have to uh buy any of those I am. They, they better send you them <laughs> you know, they do, they do send you them. Good, yeah. good. that's good that's good <laughs> so them. so everybody's dying to know i've seen it in the chat multiple times if you could only have one style of Ned, one color, one color Ned Ned bait, the, the last deck, the, the worm part, uh, one color head, one size, and one setup, what what's on your rod? All conditions, well, clear, getting a little muddy. Bit harder. I'm getting a little bit more diverse, but back back a few years ago, it yep. would be a. A, a zinc two and a half zinc or Z on a sixteenth okay. ounce, or yep. a one thirty second ounce jig head. It, but okay, and in Kansas, I would probably say back then it would have been a short choice head. Oh wow, yeah. And now I would say a baby blue, baby blue, like a Carolina blue color. No, it's, it's like a it's, it's like, like a light my, blue, it's like my granddaughter's baby blue fingernail polish. So, okay, um, yeah, it's uh, you, you can just go to the, go to a store, at, you yeah, know, sure. whatever you can buy fingernail polish. Yeah, my granddaughter's give it. them to give it to me when it gets down. It's this baby blue, and uh, yeah. it's been dynamite. It kind of replicates. Are, are you guys familiar with? You have green sandfish up where you are. Sure, the little okay, dot you know, on the side they, of there. They have sure. along the the gill cover. They had yeah. this little stripy blue thing. Yeah, it's man. Replicates that that blue color essentially. How about and, uh, that? That's really been it's really been the day in day out. It's it's my favorite color. But I let me I I, I use I use three colors. I use red. Yep. I use short truth and blue. Oh yeah. And we Shin uh Fukai, we me and, Shin yeah. Fukai, You guys know Shin Shin Fukai. Yeah, of course. Master Shin, Japanese. Shin finesse. taught me Shin taught me the the red phenomenon mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. back in uh, 2006 down on Beaver Lake. Yeah. And he was fishing a Gary Yamamoto shad shaped worm oh, on sure. a red jig head. Oh yeah. And uh, in the springtime, that's all he throws is is a red jig head. Back in those How days. How about that? Wow. In fact, he used to when he'd have a top water bait or a yep. crank bait, he yep. would paint with his wife's fingernail polish red polka dots all over those baits, you know, on the that, side that's of the man. So I'm so all about the fingernail to, polish. I love it. Yes, Shin. Yeah. So we're red fingernail polish really really paves the way for for us Midwest fishers. And I yeah. was really enthralled that Shin was using it too, you know. So Absolutely. Shin taught me a lot. Shin Very taught cool. me uh, we we do a lot of shaking on our on our on our retrieves. Yeah you do. Shin was the master shaker. He could he would sh he would shake his bait incessantly. He was fishing it he was fishing a heavier jig head than we had. He fishes about a three thirty second ounce one, but yep. you know a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger than an eighth ounce, no, about about an eighth ounce big jig. And he would make a cast, and he says, and he had broken English at that time. If if my bait touch bottom, I do wrong. Something <laughs> of, that nature, of that nature, you know. So he yeah. would take a cast down and let it get to about a foot to six inches above the bottom. And he would start retrieving and swimming it back, a swimming presentation, 
and shake, 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 shake incessantly. He never would stop. And yeah. he ended up winning that. Uh, that was at FLW tournament uh, down there. And he, you know, he, went, it, he won 200,000 yeah. bucks in that tournament by fishing wow. what we call Midwest finesse fishing. You know, that's it, awesome. Yeah. So, Incredible. So that's essentially the ba basics of what we, uh, how we do it. So, so you would take a zinc or Z and cut it in half, right? So you'd have yes, the, a zinc or Z yeah. and cut it in half. And that, yeah. and that was our basic bait. You know, now, sure. now they have TRDs. Oh, sure. Yeah. Stuff and, but this last, you know, this last month or two months, we, we fish a lot of plastic worms and we, we still do, they're, they're always four and a half inches, five inches long. And we cut them down just to four inches too. We, sure. We're still, we're still modifying the baits all the time. So yeah. in, in the color of a bait we use, so would you want to know that? Yeah, of it's, course. Okay. No question. Right, right now, <laughs> I would say day in, day out throughout the year, it's green pumpkin. Okay. Mm. But in Kansas right now, this time of year and through the summer, it is June bug. And June, bug June bug is really a very, very, very productive color. But yeah, green, green pumpkin and June bug. Uh, or what we use. Primarily. What determines what are you clear water, green water, pumpkin, water, more water dirty? Water, okay, the, gotcha. The murkier the water, more we go to June bug. Sure. You know? you know, a lot of lot of pros say they they use they think green pumpkin is fine. You know, yeah. is uh, in mur murky water, but I we found that June bug is will outperform it. We in Kansas, you know, and all I all I got all I know now is Kansas. You know, I'm yeah. just fishing close to home. It just yep. sounds like, oh man, I don't like to drive very far anymore, you know. And yeah, after, sure. After I, and I, I'm, I'm not fishing very much, as many hours as I used to. I used to go out and fishing sometimes 12 hours, you know. And yeah, right. Now, right. I'm, now I'm fishing two to four hours, and I'm like my grandkids. I want, Grandpa, I want to get a bite. I, I prefer getting a bite than I can't do catching, catching bass anymore. I want to catch, theoretically, we try to catch 25 bass an hour. We, hell, we hardly ever do it, of course. Sure. But we average, we average, uh every year pretty close to 10 bass an hour when we, wow. we calculate all of it so that's which and that's sometimes me fishing alone or sometimes with two of us in the boat so what's your setup now is it fluorocarbon i mean a braid to fluorocarbon leader what pound what size okay. rod let's talk about that rod okay, setup man sure. people got questions yeah i i changed my whole motif on november 4th 2021 how about for that? years and years and years I what? was, I was, uh, I had an idea of just fish frugally and, yep. uh, and, 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 and try to try to do it simply. Sure. And I was, I, I grew up fishing, uh, rods that were, that were made first by, by Harold Lindsay's people who he worked mm -hmm. for and he grouped for a lot of people. And there were five foot, five inches or five foot, six inches. Short then, rod. And, mm, yeah. The short rods. Yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, and still to this day, short rods are the motif of all of us who are not all of us, me and some, several of my acquaintances. We are we are short rod addicts. And I got a little bit for a while where I was going in my frugality bend was the fishing, you know, just inexpensive rods that were five feet, eight to six feet long. Sure. And I used my old Cardinal fours, which. Oh, my gosh. I, got, I, I love that in. reel. I got back, you know, this 1970. Yeah, the, the rear the, drag with the with the dial, the green and white. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I smooth used the, drag out of Sweden. I used those from 1970 to <laughs> November Travis. 4th, 2021. Oh my, I love and, those uh, reels. Wow. But to to uh, you always had bail spring problems with those kinds yeah. of things. So what I did was I made a manual reel out of. I cut the bail off and just used my index finger. Oh, you know, like you like saw what fishermen do. That's so, so crazy, years years like a Van Stahl. Yeah, and that yeah. Was, uh, what we did. Travis, what he's talking about is there's no bail on. Yeah, the, I know. I'm real. trying to figure that out right now. It, look, look up Van Stahl, and oh, you'll get yeah. the idea. You cast, yeah. and then you put that with your finger, your line, right in your roller. There's no right. bail. Yeah, and it, it made fishing a lot quicker too. You know, it just it was a quicker way to fish, and you really didn't throw a lot of air air knots like a lot of guys do with when they're using using the bail and stuff. Yeah. It was really pretty efficient, you know, because sure. if you're trying to catch 25 fish an hour, which, you know, I just told you I seldom do it, but that's our, sure. that's our goal. And it's not my goal so much anymore as I've gotten older. I, I, I haven't done it for a few years. You know, I, sure. occasionally I'll catch 25, but I, the next hour I'll only catch four, you know. But, but so 
it just it helps you keep going little fishing a little bit at a quicker pace, which is important, you know. And we always take the we always we always take the barb off the hook too, off every, every one of our jigs, That's just so crazy. we can get that hook out of his mouth faster and put it back in and make that, another yeah. cast. So wow. it's always fishing barbless, always fishing bar and it <laughs> and it helps you know when, when you're hooking a lot of fish, it it keeps from uh, injuring the things too. And sure, we think sure. That's, that's pretty important. Sure. Uh, in my mind, is to not interest as many fish. You know. So what are you we doing now? Deep, what's what, 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 very many. Excuse what's me? the what's the new setup? You changed your whole setup. So okay. no more Cardinal yeah. Four, friend, no more five foot five. Let's talk yeah, about your setup a today. Friend of mine named Drew Reese, who was a tremendous fisherman. He's he, he lives in Kansas, and he fish, actually fished in the first Bassmaster Classic. He came in seventh wow. place, and uh, Drew uh, grew up in Kansas City. Uh, and uh, he worked for a guy named Ray Fink, who had a tackle shop, Fink's Tackle Shop. And um, Ray actually made the first uh, rods for Gary Yamamoto, Gary 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 Loomis at, oh, uh, at Loomis Bates. And these were called we, we uh, they call them stingers. And that that's what that's what uh, that's what Ray Ray Fink called them. And yeah, they were the uh, five foot four and five foot ten inch Loomis uh, jig, jig jig spin rods, yeah. spinning rods. Yeah, and anyway, they're fantastic rods, and they're they were expensive these are rods too, you know, for their time. I still have oh. one that I, 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 you know, one left. And I, Tennessee I still handle use it. or Tennessee handle, or did it have a real Tennessee seat? Hand, oh man, I love Tennessee the handle, Tennessee handle. Tennessee handle is, cru is crucial. It's I crucial. agree. I want my it's finger crucial. on the blank, right? I yes, want to feel crucial, the blank. Crucial. I agree. That's Agreed. A, and so Drew, Drew, Drew has been using uh, the 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 the. the uh, the uh, those those rods for years and years. Now you can't buy them. The blanks right. are no longer available. So sure. he he started looking looking in in twenty twenty for okay. some way to replace it, and oh. he got a hold of the people down in Mud Hole down in Florida. Yeah, Mud Hole Tackle. And they he sent them a couple of the Loomis blank the uh, Loomis blanks, and they they compared them and they found a rod that's uh, six feet ten, mm. which they cut down to five four. And what? and five feet ten, and sent it to uh, sent it to to, uh, to to Drew and Drew started tying them up, and made the the new uh, stinger rod, which they, he called we, he called they called it the light line Midwest finesse rod. And that's, what? so and they gave me he gave me a a, a two two uh, Daiwa reels that are state of the art Daiwa. Reel. I mean I haven't had a new reel in so many long, but it's changed just the way I fish, and it's was. Spooled with Drew's favorite line, four pound test fire line. And so I've been using, I've gone from fishing six pound test and eight pound test to four pound test uh, fire line. And it's really changed fire the way line. Wow. I, I fish. I, you know, I never really had a sense of feel at all. Yeah. About fishing. You know, I, yeah. most strikes I got, I couldn't, I couldn't feel them. You know, I sure. didn't make any difference because uh, you still caught the, you still caught a lot of fish, but uh, yeah, they hold on. I don't sure. know if I catch any more, but just the sense and the lightness of this rod is incredible. It is mm. incredible. So I've been using it and kind of field testing it for a year. And it's uh, really, really changed the way I fished. And so straight no four pound food. fire line, straight it's four fire pound fire. Yeah. Straight, Two, but yep. straight, no leader. Yeah. I use leader. I use what, I use what the, pound I'm leader using four, four, four pound test. Lower carbon. Wow. Which one, what brand I got to know, Do you, uh, or does uh, it matter you to know, you? It does it doesn't make any difference for me. I don't, you okay. know, I'm, I'm using, I'm using a whole, whole variety of them. Sure. And so I, I, I don't know. Uh, Fair. I don't know if it makes, what, what I use some cigar. I, I, use, oh, sure. I know you, I use, I use all kinds and I can't actually tell the difference myself, but do you, you guys have an idea of what's best for you? Oh, man, uh, I've used them all. I've, I'm all I, over the map. I'm, common, I'm, I'm, I'm in the same boat as well. Yeah. I just, yeah. it's hard well, to, uh, you love Bass I have Pro my, Shop. I do like the Bass Pro I mean, Shop straight 100% right? floral carbon because it's easy to get. Yep. Um, it's relatively, you know, inexpensive and it's it holds up. So I've I experiment a lot this year with some different ones. Um the Abrazek Cigar and and uh what's the Tatsu? Yeah, Tatsu's Tatsu. pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah. I tried that. I I just I can't tell the difference. And yeah. Travis, if you tie I, a good knot, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't I know, know. I know. I know. It's all marketing. Anyway, Travis Manson, <laughs> I have to ask you this question. 
He's using a five foot five inch rod. I four, know you four own inch, five four. four five four. I know you you have one that you broke and you use it for your little dart rod in tight quarters. But yeah. does that fascinate you, Travis? That's crazy. But but I, I, I mean I, you. I've turned it over to you. I've been asking all the questions. You have to ask him. I need to know what, why. Well, I I'm assuming aren't you, just aren't you curious? Growing up and all the fishing you've done, I, I'm assuming that you're just used to those length. Like they didn't have these. Seven, seven foot rods, right? Yeah, they were non-existent. Non-existent. Yeah, this this rod this rod is so light that the light feels honestly. It's I'm not exaggerating when I say it. It feels like a feather. It's incredible. It's Five incredible. Four. I gotta and, try uh, that. What? Uh, you know, I can I can make a ninety foot cast. You know, uh, I I I have, I have a friend that works for In Fisherman. Yeah. Who. Uh, he he's uncomfortable if he can't make a cast that's over 120 feet long. But mm. you know, I, in Kansas we don't have to make casts that long. You know, he's, okay. he's you know he, he's he's fishing a lot more clear water situations for smallmouth. Okay. Than, than, than I am. I so, see. And I I can't. I, and I don't know if he's primarily fishing on the initial getting catching his fish on the initial drop mm. of the of the of his rig. You know, I, I would say we only catch not even 10% of the fish on the initial drop. You know, hmm. we, we've worked the, we work our baits all the way back to the boat. You know, we hmm. have six different retrieves we use and it's just all the way back to the boat. And, uh, and Mike and some of my casts are just 30 footers or 40 footers, you know? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, so, but I can, with my new, with these new rods that the Drew, the Drew Reese rod, a 90 foot cast, uh, with his four pound test line is uh, is easy pot easy 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 easy, and well, I'm still using the same four pound test that he put on that spool uh, in November of last year. And that's I, awesome. I reverse it. I reverse it about every okay. you know, three or four weeks. Oh. And uh, and what 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 leader knot do you guys use? I use the San Diego Jam. I guess. Oh, you mean braid to fl braid to fluoro? Yeah, braid so I go, I go ten or twelve down, seven up, and I try to lay the when I'm going up in between the wraps of going down, and then back through the loop that I made. So I make a loop with my fluorocarbon leader. Yeah. I shoot the braid through top down. I wrap twelve down 12 with light line, eight yeah. up, and then seven up or eight up. I believe me, you and, know it's and, close. And, what happens I, when you what happens when you when you have to retie in the boat and the wind's blowing? Uh, that's an easy one for me to tie. Is it okay? Yeah. I cannot do the FG knot. I had a little moment on the stream with the FG knot. I tried it at home in calm conditions, and I'm just like, that is a reliable knot. I can't remember the last time okay. I had that knot fail at the connection. Yeah, I've broken leaders. I've broken my braid, but the knot. I, I think it's important once you fail. do tie it, and then you. Uh, Take a scissors to get it as close as you can as far as the, the tag right. in. And then right. I do a really good test right then and there. And if yeah, I can't break it quick, I feel like it's a good knot. I mean, there's times where I, I will mess up. I'll go too quick. Sure. And it breaks. We've all done that. You, but how you, how you tied a thousand of those. How many seconds does it take you to tie one of those knots? <laughs> we, we've timed them. We, they've timed me. I'm pretty quick. I can probably do it under I think 12 seconds or less. 12 seconds. Oh, that's very good. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Without cheating. Because he yeah. tried to. Yeah, sure. I am that's pretty good. quick. Got, I am very, quick with that. Very, very, you very are. Good. I, I mean, dude, I let him tie I my tie knots it, in the boat. I probably tie that knot 20 to 25 times a day during guiding season. You know, just re-rigging right. at night to. Right. Fixing people's oh, problems. Oh, for you sure. Know. Yeah. I got and a technical how long question. are you guys using? So I for use, me, I, I prefer. Two to three of my arm length, this arm length. I'm about so nine foot. I'll do six to, I was going to say six to nine feet somewhere in there. Yeah. Six to nine. Okay. Yeah. Yep. 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 And then a San Diego jam knot or a double San Diego jam knot on the, to the jig head. San, jig it, head. It, it, yep. Well, yep. Ned, it's Ned, a slip what, knot, what, which is what's awesome. What's the deepest you feel like you've caught fish with that setup? And, can you give any advice to the viewers? Because I, I fish Ned rigs super deep and yeah. 
I'll normally, if I can get away with it, I'll use the Z-Man uh, Nedlocks in the one tenth size right. on a standard, you know, the the regular TRD. Yeah. Um, and so it takes a while in that thirty to forty foot range for smallmouth. It takes a while for that bait to get down there, and oftentimes, sometimes you lose, you almost lose feel unless you come across some sort of rock or something hard on the bottom, then you can just feel a little tick. And a lot of times mm -hmm. those smallmouth, especially the Great Lakes smallmouth, that little tick is oftentimes the bite as well. Sure. What's your experience with fishing it deep? Well, I, I don't fish deep. I've, uh, I've quit fishing deep uh, a number of years ago. The deepest I fish probably is 15 feet. And I do it year, you know, I, I, I fish shallow year around. And I have That's found that awesome. there are, uh, in, in the environments that I'm fishing from the Lake of the Ozarks to, uh, to which is central Missouri to, uh, Northeastern Kansas, we, we really, we can find shallow water fish, you know, sometimes are, you know, you get more shallow water fish than others. And mm -hmm. so I, I just primarily fish from zero to 12 feet. I fish 15, go down to 15, but, uh, and, uh, you know, we, we have, I can imagine, I would say, I can't imagine, I'm, I would say most of our fish come in about seven to eight feet of water, maybe nine, seven to nine feet of water. That's where I would catch it. And we'd like to, we like to, uh, in even fishing for smallmouth, we like to focus around a little bit of aquatic vegetation. And, uh, but especially, especially for, for largemouth bass. And, this, uh, yeah, I love and it. We, we've gotten, so I don't know, are, are you guys, do you, do you guys get get bewildered by what we call filamentation algae in, in your waterways? For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for sure. I used, to, I used to hate it. I used to hate it until this year. And uh, we, we have we have one reservoir. It's a community reservoir. And the people who live around this community decided they didn't like this lake uh, to have so much uh, coontail in it. So they stocked oh, man. just oodles of grass carp in it. In it oh, it no. Completely annihilated the... Uh, the no. coontail, but it's been replaced by filamentaceous algae, and it's unbelievable how many bass we can catch around that big wads of filamentaceous. We got wads of filamentaceous algae. Are you kidding are, me? Uh, hmm. Just black, green, really? Yeah, that's awesome to know that they use it. Yeah, they. Well, I didn't either. I used to. I used to swear at it. You know, just cut. Yeah, it of course, it's it, green. It's nasty. It's slimy. Yeah. It's terrible. And actually, when you if you catch a if you catch a good bass in it. It will get it will get completely wadded up, and you'll be roiling in a, a ten pound piece of stuff. One hundred percent. It's really uh, the bass huh. will be only. You know, of course, the bass is only going to weigh about two and a half pounds, but he'll have so much <laughs> algae on it. It's, right. It's a, it's a ten pound whopper. You know. It's so a, how do you ha how do you handle it? Like, is it that is that why you're using the lighter jig heads? I mean, let's talk oh, about. Yes. Yes. Yeah. A one thirty second. A one thirty yeah. second. One thirty yeah, second. Really important. That's extraordinary. To use. You know, I would always say err on the side of lightness. You know, as light as you can get fish, away with you're fishing sure. a one tenth or even yeah. you know z man makes one six and one fifth ounce stuff sure yeah you know, i would even if i'm fishing vertically and deep up in the in, in the great lakes and stuff i would try to i would try to go lighter than ever so my my theory is lighter is better at all times interesting in all places. i agree jig, head, jig head wise but yeah most yeah. people no. don't agree with me but it's no just, we're talking ned rig fishing man that's what this is about nothing else this is the ned show yeah, We're talking watch. about Ned. We've got yeah. the father of it here. You know, so. yeah, but, but you know, I you, mean, how many hours you have people, with a dead rig? A lot of people are uncomfortable because you can't feel that bait bouncing on the bottom. You know, everybody sure. wants to feel that it on the sense. bottom. But I, like Shin Fukai says, if I'm touching the bottom, I do wrong. I, that's, I, I drag it on the bottom too. You know, yeah, stuff we do like too. That. But, we do too. But yeah, most of the time, I don't want to feel the bottom. So you made an incredible with this new oh, rod, go ahead. feeling the bottom a heck of a lot better than I used to. That's for sure. How about that? Mm -hmm. So so you made a YouTube video and it was the five standard retrieves. You just mentioned yes. six. Have yeah. you added a sixth to yeah, your repertoire? It, yeah, it, and well, do you want to go it, over your go ahead? The so sixth one is actually not a retrieve, but it's we call it the stroll. You know, it's when what the guys used to stroll when they couldn't use it. You couldn't stroll. stroll. The motor. Sure. Yeah. So we, we use all five retrieves while we're strolling and usually oh. we have two guys like two guys in the boat the guy in the back of the boat is going to be doing a lot of strolling because it's really a great way to to catch fish is having that bait you know behind the boat 
a 45 degree or greater Bettering, angle sure. behind the boat. Sure. And where we, one really interesting thing, I, mean, it, I was did a, did an interview with old Rick Kwan years and years ago. Yeah. And he told me about back in the day when Bass Bassmaster used to have, you know, used to have a, a amateur in the back of the boat a lot, or even a, a, a pro actually. They did two guys. Yeah, a partner. <laughs> You're right. right. And he it's had a pro guy from pro. Japan was one of his partners one day. And this guy, Rick was, was, uh, you, you know, burn, burning a crankbait vertically <laughs> along, along a riprap shoreline. Yeah. And it yep. was, you know, about, about two feet, three feet of water between the boat and the, and the, and the water's edge. Nowhere so for the, the guy the to guy cast. The guy back of the boat didn't have a place to fish. So he was yeah. strolling behind the boat with a, with a, with a worm. And he was catching more fish than Rick. So, you know, that's where how I started thinking about scrolling, you know, and then the word scrolling started got in the profit in the in the nomenclature of bass fishing. And we so we just started doing we just we just used to call it polling or mm -hmm. I don't know what I give them different upper names, but it was always a great way to fish. You know, we, sometimes we had used two rods the guy in the back of the boat, he would have a marbu jig on and the yeah. other one with, with a jig worm on. And he the the marbu jig would just be kind of vertically over the side of the boat just bouncing yeah. around and wow. you sometimes catch more four fish just doing that than uh than, that's than, crazy than anybody else so strolling is but when we stroll we can use all five of the baits you know it's yeah. swim glide and shake drag drag and dead stick and when you're back there strolling what you do is just open your bail and let that bait fall down and you know count from one to five or one to six how many seconds uh, seconds you have and then open the bail, close the bail again and just start dragging. And, How uh, about that? Mm -hmm. And then we do a, you know, we do a drag and shake. And this is kind of like Shin Fukai's swim and shake, but we just shake, shake almost incessantly as we drag on the bottom. And then we do the traditional hop and bounce, but we do the hop and bounce instead of lifting our rods, like most people do when they work in, yeah. work in a jig and pig or jig yeah. and some, some sort of uh, trailer bait. We always had a rod tip down, almost pointed, directly in the water we mm. make two, two rotations of the reel handle and mm -hmm. we stop to the debate the debate gets hits the bottom again and as soon as it hits the bottom we make two more rotations of reel handle and it just kind of hops hops along the bottom that way now a guy uh, uh, terry bivens uh he used to be a nascar driver he's he's from kansas and he developed that way for fishing for a crappie with a marble mm. jig and boy yeah. it works really great mm -hmm. with a you know jig worm or a uh, for bass jig with 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 a uh it just works better especially when you're in wind just lifting your rod up you just get that bow in your line but this keeps, yeah. this keeps uh -uh. that keeps it I, keeps that bow out of the it's, it's funny you bring that up i just this morning this i had a conversation with someone about uh bucktail hair jigs uh -huh. and he said the same thing um because mm. i was like you know it's hard for sometimes for clients to get the the hang of that i go i i'm assuming you're you're fishing it kind of like a ned and he goes yes but I, I i point the rod down a lot of times i just reel a half a turn and then half stop it yeah and uh and then reel it again and it made sense to me so i'm, I'm looking forward to trying that more yeah, often it, when you get closer to the boat probably a half a turn you you do you go when you're first when you're, you're first okay going to be about two and then as you get closer to the boat yeah but interesting I, we, we slow down and it I don't know if I made a ever made a half, but it's been you know one or one I think three quarters maybe. But mm -hmm. and you just you know you can just see it when the slack goes out of your line, you just because you you only have but you know five or six inches of, of line above the the uh, yeah the, the the water. So, and sometimes when it's really windy in Kansas, if we get a lot of wind, the tip of our rods are almost touching touching the water, the surface. Interesting, the that's fascinating. Is that those are those are great thoughts and you know you just imagine what the bait's doing down there um i watched shin fukai do a a weighted wacky japan it was a technique called inchy wacky and it was very heavily you know wacky but weighted mm -hmm. and a lot of shaking and what i noticed i watched a video of shin and a lot of people fishing wacky will shake it on the way up and then let it glide down and let the bait uh -huh. do the work shin yeah. did it opposite he he would he would he would let Shake the bait. Yes. yes. It and if you've been shaking on the way up, it's so hard to train your brain to shake on the way down. Way down. And I caught I I was doing it in a tournament on Lake Gaston and I got two big fish to get the day started. 
weighted wacky Shin Fukai style on some <laughs> that black slime on some dead coontail and it, all that slime. But those fish were in it because it was retaining heat. Anyway, a little story, but it was I credit Shin with going. But I had a really hard time teaching myself to shake it on the fall. Do do you do you guys shake shake your worm when you when you fish a jig worm or just a regular worm on the fall? Uh, I, well, after watching Shin do it, yeah, Shin, because I have a ton mm -hmm. of respect for him, but I didn't yeah. before. Uh, it yeah. would be yeah I, on the bottom I'm, or, or go ahead, Travis. Yeah, yeah. no, go I'm ahead. I'm I'm always shaking, but my my favorite technique um, is throwing it out there, letting it fall, not feeling a whole lot, don't know what's going on down there. But I'll start shaking it, but I'll keep it on the bottom. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to move it, but I want to shake it. And then I want to, and then I'll do a dead stick. And I just, I go with the flow. Like I go with my instincts. And then I'll just, I love, I, I notice myself. I've like have little tremors. That's what I'm doing with that. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll be like, you're, Stop. you're shaking the slack. Yes. Yeah. I'm slack lining most, no, like, most of the time. You're not uh, yeah. always slack lining. You got a lot right. of tricks. It's, I don't even think you know what you're doing because you're, you coach when you coach, but then I, when I watch you, I'm like, he's doing something different. Than he told me. So you got a <laughs> lot of moves in between. No, I think when you, I'm just saying, to, I do when bust, you, like, listen, a, a standard retrieve, I'm, I'm probably going to apply a bunch of different moves. As I, if I know I'm in an area where the fish are and I know there's one tracking it, or I know it's creeping up to something, or I just have that feeling you got to get that fish to commit. And sometimes they're just looking at that thing and they just want to change a pace. But oftentimes for me, when I try to bring that bait up like a quick jerk, they don't want that. I'm just me personally. That's just for smallmouth. I just find that I got to keep that bait shaking, 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 and then dead stick it and mm. maybe scoot it sideways mm. and then stop it. Like it's, oh. it's a lot. There's a lot. I try to switch it up on that retrieve always. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. You might be doing all five retrieves in one retrieve. Right. <laughs> and some strolling at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, we talked about colors. We talked about line. We talked about your rod. I'm fascinated by the size of the rod. Love the Tennessee handle. Um, you've upgraded your 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 graphite, if you will. So now you're feeling things you haven't been able to feel before. Um, what is the, 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 the most bass, what color combination and bait style holds the record catch for a single day in the world of Ned Cady, either by yourself or with another, what were you throwing? I, I think I know the answer cause I read it in Midwest finesse. Um, but I want to hear if it's changed. Well, um. And this is how I got to do a special show with Travis because I brought some cool colors up that we threw on the St. Lawrence together. Golly, you know, I got I got the old man disease again. Let's see. Well, I'm, let me see if the, does this ring a bell. Let me let me let me see if I remember. I read an article and I I think I saw you say it or I read about you saying it. It was a red mushroom head jig head right. and a Z man finesse worm. I think it was green pumpkin. Okay, and that's yeah. uh, that, that's. I think that that actually uh, that 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 uh, that was that was a fourteen hour ordeal with that worm. Yes, and uh, I think it was two hundred and thirty six. Yes, bass. it was it was it over two hundred. It was over two hundred. Yeah, I remember maybe that. Two hundred thirty six. Right, Travis. And that's I, crazy. I sent it to I sent it to the guys at Z Man. They wanted to put it in their archives. They took a picture of it. I remember the worm well, seeing they, it. And, and okay. I, I I had always thought, like, I bought mushroom gopher heads. They came out with a pro model that had a gamakatsu hook. Um, you know, I, I was I was in, in my brain. I wanted a, a larger diameter hook because if I was tournament fishing, you know, I'd be dock fishing or cover fishing. And I so I, I was all over the map. And um, I always thought it was, you know, the Zinker Z. And then Z-Man came out with a lot of products. But. It brought me back to like, wow, there's a colored head out there. Red makes sense to me. And yeah. so I brought two colored heads up with Travis to the St. Lawrence and he, he had never seen them. They were Z-Man, Chartreuse and Red. And we fished head to head to see what color outfished the other. I think we came up with 
it didn't necessarily matter that day. Uh, you know, I started out. I, I will tell you this. I felt like the colored head made the difference that day because we yes. were throwing straight black in that same yes. area. That's right. And that's right. when we're like, let's try something different. Mm -hmm. And it, I think we had a 25 pound bag pretty quick. We did. Yeah. 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 I'll never forget that. Like that well, was how deep uh, the water. Were you guys fishing? That so day? shallow, three, uh, four foot. three to four feet. They were up, they were up on a rock, uh, Flat a rock bar, flat yeah, bar. There was you go. Spawning, was the spawning season? Pre spawn. Pre 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 spawn. Yeah, so that's when red is really a good a good pre spawn and spawn time in in our neighborhood. So I, you know, same with us. Yes. In our our tidal rivers, Ned. I'm from the Potomac River Upper Bay in Maryland. Uh -huh. I fish a lot in North Carolina, but mm -hmm. um, you know, a red. Any any red, like the crawfish are sloughing during that full moon. They're coming out of the mud. They may be black with some red, but red seems to trigger. Red trap in the spring. I mean, that's very predominant all over the country, really. Uh, here, yeah, here's right. a good question. Here's a good question that came in. Do you ever use a weedless net head? Great Never question. Do. Never wow. do. Me neither. Yeah. Never have. You used to. When I first started, yeah, I, I won't I, I ever know. again. I know. I, I don't know. mind just, getting I, caught a little bit. I like I, to rip that out and, and then yeah, kill it. You do, man. I, or just or just tie another one on. <laughs> well, if I get snagged, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah believe me, we fish in this. We fish to the same boat. We know what's right. up. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's cheap, right? I mean, you can't go in and ruin a spot if you're trying to get out a you know twenty five cent net. I'd rather go get it, but I mean, let's not when we're tournament fishing, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Good yeah. stuff. Do you ever? Have you ever supersized your neds? Um, no, I never have. I never okay. Have. I, yeah, I've just, uh, I'm just been, a, I've just been a small bait fanatic for so long that I okay. just haven't. Uh, so the big I, TRD, have you, have the you big TRD. I'm sorry, Travis. Go ahead. I'm so I'm sorry. sorry. I just uh, no. Yeah. You go. I've been. You go. I, so some <laughs> of the other finesse baits that are out there, have you messed around with them a little bit or experimented with uh, any of their other? I guess. And not it doesn't have to be Z Man, but any of oh, the smaller yeah, when creature when I baits. Things like fisherman that. for years, you know, I, I did, I did uh, gear guides in the, with when I tried to tried to do a s stories on every every finesse bait that was coming out, mm. uh, soft plastic ones. So I used I used all kinds of them, and they sure. all they all catch fish. You know, they're all all very good, okay. and uh, work work well. You can catch fish on them, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so I, I, I but I, I primarily use uh, I, all I do. All I use is Z-Man stuff, just because they they started the baits, and I just been kind of wedded to them ever since I started. Sure. And I, I like them. I like I like, and so I just use I use a worm, and I use the finesse shad Z. Are you are you guys? Did you have you guys ever gotten using the finesse shad Z? Amazing, amazing, yeah. amazing I, bait. You know, yes. I, yeah, and I, I'll fish a lot of their swim baits almost like a Ned rig and keep it on the bottom and not swim it. Swim it, And right. uh, I have a lot of success with that, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we fish their small swim baits like the Swim Swim Z. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Their, you know, and a grub, a grub has been a big, big bait around Kansas and in Missouri and the Ozarks for, you know, decades and decades. And they've come out with a three and a half inch grub. And it's... Uh, it's been a really a very effective bait for us, but that's, you know, that, and it, you know, Z, since it's a Z-Man bait, I got one on now that I'm, I'm just, I haven't kept track accurately, but it's <laughs> over a hundred bass it's got. You that's know, crazy. It's, it's, uh, Do still, you super glue it? No, I never super glue it. Wow. At all. Yeah. Wow. And I'm, I'm fishing them on Z-Man is making a gopher style jig now, you know, yeah. and, uh, and I'm using, cause go for, Gopher went out of business, and there's a new gopher company now in Iowa that's just making them. But I just oh, uh, and so but but I I just I I Z Man went and got got the old the old uh, gopher, and they're 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 making them in three thirty second, a one sixteenth and one thirty second size, and just like just like uh, Derek and his dad used to make back in the old 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 days. Oh yeah. So Can I, so, so I, I'm just curious. Gotta, you oh. mentioned the slim. Uh, what is it? The uh, slim swimsy. Slim swims. Yes. Yes. And I assume you try. You're, you're trying to go really light on that too. But I just want to throw something out there and, and maybe get your opinion on this. 
when I pair that with a heavier head, sometimes I feel like that fall and that that tail kicking on the initial cast mm. as it's as it's falling. Sometimes I feel like I draw more strikes with a heavier on the fall. How deep? How deep of water are you fishing there? So I would say ten to ten to fifteen. I'm thinking primarily uh, on a, a grass edge for largemouth on that initial uh -huh. fall. All right. Yeah, I, I I actually using now my cousin my cousin who I fish with a lot uses a three thirty second ounce uh, or gopher type gopher jig or mushroom head jig, mm -hmm. and I'm using a uh, a, a, a one fifteenth ounce uh, Ned Lock Z uh, on on that on that swim swim Z. Okay. And uh, so that's and that's the only time I use that that Ned Lock one is on when I'm using either a grub. Or, or the swim baits. Okay, okay. Yeah. interesting. Hey, quick question for you. On um, I we we I fish a lot of fisheries with grass, aquatic grass, coontail, yeah. milfoil, hydrilla. Can oh. we talk a little bit about how you attack a grass fishery? Um, what yeah. is your setup? Are you changing the weight at all? Let's talk about: Are you casting to the edge? Are you trying to hang the bait up? Are you snagging? You know, there's a lot of northern anglers who have great success fishing the Ned uh, or jig worm, uh, open hook, in heavy grass, not punching, flipping. But right. let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah. I want to hear your experience. You're talking coontail. Yeah. I mean, bass love coontail and, and milfoil. Let's talk about it. Give us yeah, your insights. I, I, I love it. I, I fish it. Uh, I, I love it. I, I fish it, you know, main prime all year long. And yep. and it's uh in fact, you know, the trouble trouble that I have in, in Kansas is it deemed an invasive species like you know, you you Eurasian milfoil is a deep oh, sure. invasive species, although it's been in the United States since uh, some people say 1890, some people oh. other people say 19, 1920. But what? it's over a hundred years and one okay. is no longer invasive. I agree. And uh, I, I, uh, I'm let just talk coontail. Let's just talk about weeds for a second, then we'll get back how I fish them. Right and on. I've been trying. I've been trying to get uh, our conservation commissions to not poison it, not 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 put uh, grass carp in it, but they can go to Wisconsin and and, and buy a buy a cutter. Yeah, harvester sure. And cut this stuff and maintain it like you may maintain a golf course or a yard. And sure. still have coontail and Eurasian milfoil, which I can fish in in January, February, November, 100%. December, in March. Dang you know? right. And uh, so it's really important to try to get these people to stop spraying this stuff and realizing Agreed. this stuff is no longer invasive, essentially. I mean, Agreed. they're stocking grass carp in here, which are invasive species. They're killing invasive species. Yeah. And, and the reservoirs that I'm fishing are invasive species are really invasive you know they never were here before the 1930s and 1950s sure. so yeah i'm just can't i'm campaigning i'm gonna campaign spiel here so yep. I'm just, okay I'm just thank going. you so right there I, with I you fish, I, I fish eurasian milfoil i, I fish i fish coontail i fish uh, american uh, uh, american pond weeds i fish american water willows i fish but those, those are two uh, emergent plants, but uh, and I, I fish uh, uh, primarily in, in 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 November. The curly leaf pondweed starts blooming around here, okay. and it, it grows up in, until June thirtieth, uh, June third, and it starts dying June third. But we fish these baits primarily fishing a sixteenth ounce to a one twentieth to a one thirty second wow. ounce jig head. Wow! And uh, we. We're gonna we're gonna primarily fish what we call the swim glide and shape, and okay. sometimes you're gonna have to be fishing just you know four inches, five inches under the surface, mm -hmm. and then you know and just swim it, swim it back. And when you come to a hole, you make a pa a long pause, let it pause, and it's pausing. You shake, shake, shake like you guys are doing, shake, mm -hmm. shake, shake. And when you get when you get pet, get to that, you bring it back up, and you start swimming glide shake. Swimming glide shake till you get to the outside edge, but we we try to fish the whole body of it. You know, most a lot of guys get get really got tag get they get hung up in this stuff, get their their lure, lure, lure weed clobbered because they're throwing in and using too heavy of a jig head, and yep. you can just 
if you just patiently swim it around there and find lots to swim it around with and fish the outside edges and fish in the holes and pockets, you can you can catch a heck of a lot of fish that way. You know, and it's just right. uh, and that's when we catch most of our fish on the initial drop. It's when we're fishing that type of okay that type of stuff too. Yeah, and uh, so it's, you know it's it's a very good way to fish. We probably spend. I would say more than 50% of our time is spent fishing uh, shallow water flats with yeah. with a bit aquatic vegetation on them. Oh, that's, do, a, that's amazing. Do you, um, do you put scent on any of your baits? At yeah, times? sometimes I do. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I use Procure uh, occasionally. Mm. You know, Your I, friend I do, Travis do Myers do does. Than mm -hmm. I do now. Yeah, you Travis know, but, is on, by the way. By the way, Travis Myers. Travis Myers. He's, he's watching Ned. He's watching. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I used yep. to use it a lot, but I, yeah. I've uh, kind of quit using it here lately just, hmm. uh, just to try to see if it makes a difference. And, and I, I can't, I don't have an opinion yet. I, I, I got my calculations going. Okay. But I, what I like to do sometimes is just get either my wife or me or my cousin or me or, or my grandkid who I'm fishing with. I'll just fish the, I'll fish one and he'll fish the other and just see if we can keep calculating. And, you know, sometimes they'll move them up in front of the boat getting first cast. Okay. And it's just, it's so, it's so damn hard to determine what, if, how effective things are. You know, I just, I can't quite come to a, it's more impressionistic and uh, uh, kind of a, uh, observation on my part than really is hardcore science and math, mathematical calculus. And trying mm -hmm. to figure it out because I know you keep can, detailed logs. Be, yeah, it can be the guy in the front of the boat type thing situation too. You know, true, true. So, what do you guys think on it? How? What do you think? Great question. So, I I pretty much at, I'm at the point now where I have to have some type of scent on my baits. I used to say it's only for tournaments, but even when I'm fun fishing, I want to set the hook. And I've seen it plenty of times this year, even where. I'll get, a, I know they're there. I see them, uh, you know, on my electronics and I'm struggling to get a bite. And I know how these fish can get, they get very moody. Uh -huh. And, um, <laughs> it, and I'm specifically, it, I mean, just last week, I, I'll give you a, a situation, but it was, it, I was using the drop shot and it was the fact that I had a, I had a hardly move it super slack line. That bait just had a free fall, small little bait. And I could not get them to bite. And it was really driving me crazy because I bet you one out of every 20 pitches to a fish that I know was there would bite. And the rest would just swim up to it, literally knows it. And I, I really, I feel like I'm pretty good at doing the right thing at the right time. And I could not get them to go. And so mm -hmm. I took some Procure. I smeared it on there. It smelled. It was nasty. But I was like, I'm going to try it. And I probably, that day, I know I had more bites because of it yeah. after I switched. Interesting. Now, but you can go, the same day, I went to a whole, totally different school of fish, and they bit on the first drop. It didn't matter. So I'm finding hmm. I'm finding that different pods of fish, and I don't know why. Smallmouth or largemouth small too, Trey? Okay, so smallmouth maybe different, some They're in totally oriented. different areas of the lake. They're not on the same... They might not even be on the same point. It might be a, across the lake on another deal. And those fish are just not doing it where you can go across the lake and those fish will bite on the first drop. So mm. I, I don't know. Uh, it's really weird. I mean, well, you're, you're I'm watching. Glad it's not like that all over the lake. Like you can have, you can get on a school and they're like, why am I not getting bites? And you think that the whole lake shut down and it's just that particular group of fish for some reason. Ned, I've got a question. I want to go back to the grass because people were asking while you were talking about how you approach the grass. Do you use the same line or do you heavy up because you're nope. fishing? I, I'm using the same line. Okay. Um, I mean, now I'm using four pound test. I used to use six, yep. and some, sometimes eight, you know, but now yep. I'm using four pound, four pound test. Wow. And it hasn't made any difference at all. You know, wow. it, you would think it'd make, it would, the, a lighter line with the, the baits would uh, fall a little bit faster, but sure, it doesn't. I haven't had that problem. Okay, with, with it. so it's. Uh, Do you, you feel know, like you get more bites now with the with the four versus six versus no, eight? No, I, no, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not okay. getting. 
our fishing, where so many people are now, I don't know, our fishing is a lot more difficult than it was 10 years ago. Sure. And I don't know if it, we've had the large, large mouth bass virus come through Kansas. Oh, wow. And it actually annihilated the uh, small mouth population in one of our best reservoirs. I mean, absolutely more than 90% of the fish small mouth. But we used to be able to go down there and catch no. 80 small mouth bass in about four what? hours. Wow. Now, now, I haven't been down for three years, and uh, but friends of mine that go down, it's difficult to catch 10 bass in, wow. in five hours. Wow. You know? And it's affected another two of our other lakes, the smallmouth bass population, the largemouth bass virus hit hit all three of these lakes, and it's uh, and it's uh, been pretty pretty difficult. So I'm not, and it's and it's the largemouth bass virus has hit our, our other lakes too, and we forget the fishing pressure using Midwest finesse has gone up considerably too. So people think that has affected you know the fish fish become somewhat wise or used to what we're doing and not as easy to catch as they once were back. But we've yeah. been fishing Midwest finesse for, you know, since yeah. the 1950s around here. So I don't know. I don't know if I abide by that <laughs> and, or not. And a lot, uh, and a lot of guys might, here's the biggest thing. You might have you a think? finesse bait in your hand. Yeah. Okay. You might have the right, whatever, you, but you might, you got to know how to work that bait. It's true. So important. But isn't yeah. that with everything crankbaits? I, I mean, guess. I don't know. What? No. I've seen it. Yeah. Oh, dude, I've seen okay. dude, a, a super out. spook. You know how to walk a super spook. A no, lot of people different. don't know how to walk a okay. super spook, Travis. Dude, a lot just, of people don't have the, the right gear. A lot of people throw a crankbait. All I'm you saying think it's is chucking you, and winding, not warming, not burning, get, not stop if, and go. Yes. I think you need to slow, slow your presentation down. Yeah. That's the yeah. biggest thing I see is guys overwork the baits. And well, I, Shin Fukai would uh, disagree. Well, I mean, he's not yeah. letting it hit the bottom. He's shaking it constantly. Yeah. And he's won a lot of money. All right, fine. Find whatever <laughs> technique works, develop it, study it and use it and apply it and build confidence and you'll catch more fish. And your style. Right. Exactly. Yes. Find or, your style. Or use, or use one of the six retrieves that Ned talks about on that YouTube video, which includes yes. strolling. And uh, you will catch them in the back of the boat behind somebody who's got you crowded to the bank. The incredible yeah. jig worm, the incredible jig worm. Jig now, the now the uh, Ned rig of in, incredible stuff. Um, what is your personal best largemouth? We can go all different species of bass that you've caught in your life, but let's start with largemouth PB size on your your um, your Ned rig. Uh, my largest one, my world largest, my largest smallmouth was five pound, 10 ounces. Wow. And that was caught in Kansas. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, the, the lake, the, the, uh, state record at that time was five thirteen. I think. Oh, yeah. wow. You so almost got it. That's it was incredible. pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I just weighed that in the boat and released it. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't take it in, you know, I, and, Good for uh, you. then I had another one weight five, six, like, couple months later and unbelievable and that that lake has been that lake has been wiped out by the largemouth bass fire ah oh, it's so, brutal and uh uh the biggest largemouth bass it was caught a long time ago and it was yeah. eight it was eight pounds three ounces and that was on, on the lake of the ozarks and that was really on a marble jig not a ned rig but that okay it, that touched part of the same phenomenon you know sure and, yeah on, on a net i really haven't weighed the largemouth bass that I've caught, and I, I would say, I don't know, I don't know, six and a half pounds probably. You know, okay. the biggest I've caught on it. You know, yep. My biggest bass I ever caught, largemouth, is eight pounds three ounces. In, nice. Uh, yeah, but that's that was on the jig. That was on the marabou jig. If yeah. if you could not use a a marabou jig, uh, a Ned rig, a Midwest finesse, if you just, I had to force you to throw something else tomorrow <laughs> what would you use great question it is a great question yeah <laughs> would you even would go fishing probably, i would probably use a uh, i'll just keep the boat on the trail every day use Travis. a small a small rattle trap Ooh. you know you're talking about the micro a two inch, a two inch rattle trap type thing yeah yeah, yeah. Hmm. Like, you know? like something like that maybe <laughs> yeah something like that yeah okay. that's what it probably i would throw 
Yeah, but I got the. I'll send you one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, I I actually last last summer a friend of mine was moving to Florida and he had a he had a garage sale. Yeah. And I sold all my all my old stuff. Everything. What? Everything was everything was sold. So you didn't have any wiggle room. warts in there, did you? <laughs> oh my God! Yes. <laughs> oh, 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 oh what? <laughs> Travis, why did you get him on last year? I don't know. <laughs> in fact, uh, you know, Travis, Travis is the big pure cure man of the world. He is sure. he's the king the king of pure pro curism. Yes, he is. He is. Travis yeah. Myers yeah. is. He he got us, he got us. Um we, we had him on the show. Well, he was on the podcast and he was on live maybe twice mm -hmm. or three times now. Uh -huh. But he um he really got me into scent and then I started looking at ways to improve the scent center on the market, especially for, uh, you know, Great Lakes, small uh -huh. mouth. And we actually, uh, we came up with the Procure small mouth crush, small mouth uh -huh. magic scent. Uh -huh. And Good. so it's got a little secret stuff in here. Good. Secret sauce. And they love it. They love it. You're going to have to sell a little is harder it, to get uh, Ned to believe it. But, does well, it, does this have a, cray, a crayfish mix with it too? Um, that one does have a little bit of crayfish. It's got a little bit of everything, a little bit of shrimp. shrimp. Um, yep, yep. Night There's crawler. uh, you have night crawler no night crawler, no night crawler mm. in that one. But hey, no, listen, I'm not against that. that. I, in fact, I have a hard, I have really? a hard night crawler. Interesting when you're using Procure night crawler. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Fascinating. Um, they're, they're goby, which. I don't know how long it's going to stay on the market because they can't get any more raw material legally. Legally, um, really? Yep. So that's a that's a real issue they're facing. But their goby, uh, of course, it's got a little bit of goby in it. But the the goby straight goby scent also is, oh, is I pretty bet. good. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I bet. I think Travis Myers uses a crayfish in night. I don't know. I can't. I can't. I remember. believe he did. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Fascinating stuff. Wow. So yeah. you would use a little rattle trap. I thought you were going to say beetle spin. Well, well that that's a, that's that's, a, that's what we call a Ned rig too, you know. It goes Okay. I, I would I if you were if you would let me use a beetle spin, but I would, Oh yeah, that's different I than a Ned rig sure in our book. Yeah. Well, yeah, no. I mean that Travis, that's different than a, a Ned rig is a Ned So rig have you ever a, experimented? A, I'm sure you have, but let's say a little Ned rig where you would put that spinner and fish it kind of on the bottom or maybe you would screw in a spinner on your plastics have you sure. done any yeah, of that we've, we've we've put a we put a spinner a tail spinner on them you know z-man mm -hmm. makes them now uh, you yeah. know which you you just you, you, you put the spinner in in the back of a uh, zinc or z or a trd and uh or a or a hula stick or or mm -hmm. even or, or a tickler z you mm -hmm. know do you guys use a tickler z absolutely yeah. yeah big time right yeah. So yeah, I would um, take a hula stick and cut it in half. I like so, the, I like a little bit bigger size Ned. So so yeah. I I was talking with uh with Daniel from uh, Z Man just last week. I called him up. Actually, he was on he was on Monster Bass's live show, and Rick had me call in uh, to talk about their new lineup of micro TRDs. And oh, I want right. you yes. to uh, have you messed with those mm. yet? Yeah, yeah. my wife got 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 a bass on the third cast with it. Mm. It That's actually awesome. was a second cast, so we she cut it at the boat ramp. She was making That's so awesome. Cats. Sure, yeah, but it's uh, it's uh, it's they're they're very very very. I think it's going to be dynamite this winter, actually. And wow. Uh, yeah. And I like I like the number four hooks. I'm a big small hook guy, especially mm -hmm. fishing Me around too. vegetation. You know, it mm. just keeps you from getting hung up too much. You know. Makes so sense. I feel bad now because I I thought. When I or when I place my initial order, and I've caught plenty of fish on on that micro already this month, but I felt like I went with the biggest head that they make for those, which is of course the one tenth. And now I feel like I'm overpowered with the one tenth, <laughs> yeah. even, right? That's because so of crazy. Just, yeah, because of today, or just because of. Uh... I just this conversation. I should probably like order some smaller ones, right? I, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, wow. I, I mean, that's that's. You know, I, I, my prejudice is lighter is better, but you know that's just is what way I've been all my life. You know, yeah. most most guys think I I'm and, wrong about that, but and really? I do. So hmm. and and I do feel that 
like on a on a regular Ned rig, I, I'm fine fishing at an eight pound fluorocarbon leader. But with these micros, I dropped down to six just because uh -huh. I felt like it would better presentation through the water. But I think I'm thinking now I could even go down to four and maybe try that. Yeah. I think I, I, you can't overpower. Here's what I found on a medium light spinning rod with four pound tests on a Ned rig on a long cast. I still have to have the, the drag somewhat tight on the initial hook set, but I find myself loosening that drag throughout the fight at times mm -hmm. with that lighter line, which I'm fine with, especially those big small mouth that are going to make those long runs. Right. Yeah. But that's kind of how I've been doing it. I've been, mm -hmm. I've been, Loosening the drag on the fight pretty much all the time. Now that I've been using lighter line more often. And I feel what like these, what are, what are, yeah, even longer. How long the cast do you make? As long as he humanly can. I make sometimes. a very, if I'm fishing that micro in 25 to 30 feet of water with a uh -huh. one tenth, I am sending that thing out as, as far as I can. I'm keeping that bail open for a minute. I don't, I'm just waiting, waiting, waiting a minute. I'll That's close the bail. Like I'll feel like maybe I'm on the bottom. I might work <laughs> it for a little bit and then I'll open that bail up again and put a little more line out, especially if it's oh, windy. Wow. wow. I want to make sure it's in the zone. That's it's, crazy. Is this 120 feet or, or further you're making a cast? So I. That's from home plate to second base. Oh, uh, roughly good. there. Yeah. Yeah. If he played baseball, he would know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just messing with you, Travis. Yes, it's a it, it's a pretty long. He can cast. he can cast 120 feet, Tra but Travis but I really like it, to, Ned. He can send like, it, but I like to have that that free fall on slack line. Uh -huh. And again, I like to open my bail multiple times throughout the retrieve, especially when you almost lose feel of anything, except maybe when it comes across. I'm talking when I'm fishing like real flat rock down the bottom and there's maybe some scattered mm -hmm. boulders here and there. Like you just, you don't know that you're truly down there at times. And do you, do you, what do you, how do you, how do you set the hook? Okay. So I'll feel that little, what I'm going to call is a goby bite, but sometimes it's a five pound smallmouth bite. Cause it's pretty much the same at that depth yeah. at that distance. When I'm like, it's there. I, I just reel and I kind of do a sweep set and then, well, it's a, pull, it. it's a pull set. It's Sweep it to the I'm, side. Okay. A pull, yeah. but I'm doing, but I'm then applying as much tension as I can and let that rod load up until that fish decides to go crazy. I, mm -hmm. I can't do a quick right. set at that depth and without sometimes breaking off on the hook set. And because we find too, that uh, because the hook is, smaller than a hook a, 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 a quick and and heavy hook set will actually is detrimental to getting the hook set rather mm. than a, a pull and, and reel we mainly mm -hmm. reel more than we even pull yep. you know? you you use if you're using the new mushroom head now the, the first run of mushroom head had like this baby hook in it i did not like it it didn't yeah. look like a premium hook to me i think they've re-released it at least the ones i bought I would I would I would not throw them personally, but I bought them when they first came out. I don't know if they've had another run of the new Z-Man mushroom head. Travis, that's what I gave to Roland Martin was right. the mushroom head, and he lost several smallmouth. Now, so so he, I, yeah. he had a heavier rod than he did, and 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 you know, so I don't think it was the right setup for him. He would have been better off with a Ned Locks or something like that. I, I truly ninety percent of the time I'm a Ned Locks guy when it comes to my trds um, that's a that's a that's a that's that's a number two J hit hook yes yep mm -hmm. uh no number one number one but it's it's pretty stout for its that's size stout, ned yeah. it's a it's stout made hook. in australia it's, it's made in australia. Uh, oh is is it really i wonder if it was a thinner diameter when travis was throwing the micro z-man that same hook but maybe so one are, gauge so lighter one -tenth, this is a uh, size one size one Okay. Yep. Those that's my this one tenth size is my preferred. This is my preferred setup right here for smallmouth. Mm -hmm. Travis, um, if you were throwing the 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 micro, do you throw the one tenth on the micro or using the new hook or a new head too? Or are you going with that head? 
on the on the micro. No, no, no. Thought they have a they came out with a special jig head developed for the micros. Then you're and using that. I was it's, using that one. It's and it's way finesse, thinner it's diameter. A, it's the finesse room uh Z yep. style. Uh, it is Do you a, have one, Travis, right now um, that you could show because I'm they're all of them are in the boat. I don't have okay any with me. I wish you had one there. I, I have them in it's the definitely a I'm smaller like, hook, Eric. Like yeah, but you gotta remember I gave these. it to Roland Martin, dude. That's no, what I'm trying wasn't to tell that. you. The brand oh, new one. That's what I'm saying. They changed the hook because those were garbage. No, they, I didn't like they them. They still have those hooks. They, ch they like those designed this hooks. jig head specifically for the micro lineup of baits. But they beefed the hook up from the, the one I bought, which is probably it's a crappy jig up. head. It's not beefed up. It's Eric, that it's got, micro TRD is that big. It's, it's a not, number. It's, it's a number. Some I think it's a number four. It's you got to be. Four. Yeah. You listen. You have to be – you're not throwing that on a medium rod with eight-pound line and set I hook. understand. What I'm trying to say is I think the hook's got to be better in this new one than the one I bought. Maybe. I was not happy. I feel Maybe. like it should be. I feel like I bought a crappy jig. Maybe. A crappy jig. Yeah, when I first bought the mushroom crappy. ones that were – Yeah, yeah well, it, that's what they are. I, I think so. <laughs> I'm just curious that the finesse one is a better hook because, you know, all hooks are different. Yeah, well, if, if you're worried about that and you're using a larger Z-Man bait as well, the Pro Shrooms, I think, is a good choice. Um, they have a pretty beefy hook. I'll they throw do. a, a Z-Man minnows on that, and I'll fish yeah. on the bottom just like a Ned, but that's a great hook. Um, the Power Finesse Shrooms hook for great. your larger, your 4-inch big TRDs pairs well one, with man. that. Sure does. Um that's been good to me. We'll go through hundreds of those a uh, season. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so, Ned, I got a tournament story for you. So I'm fishing with a pure power fisherman. We're in North Carolina. And during the tournament, the first seven and a half hours of the tournament day, I'm throwing 50-pound braid around barnacles, cypress trees. We've got about 17 and a half pounds in the boat. We run into the Roanoke River within sight of the ramp. Everybody stayed in because there were four footers out in the sound. So now we've got a bunch of tournament competitors rolling around. 30 minutes left in the tournament. He goes, get out your finesse stuff. So I re-rig in the boat during the last 30 minutes. I tie a brand new fluorocarbon leader on my Ned rig rod, essentially. Go to the first spot. He goes, this has been hit 20 times. That's been hit. So we rotate. We're going to the last one. It's a log next to a lily pad field on a channel break in about five foot of water. I slide a big TRD, uh, green pumpkin, watermelon, red, laminate, one of my favorite colors. Slide it, goes right on top of the, uh, it's eight pound test, by the way, right on top of the log that has a V. I pull mm -hmm. it gently in and I just let it go with the current and I'm, I'm shaking the slack, shaking the slack. Literally, it's basically a dead stick. Uh, yeah. I'll shake it, dead stick, shake it, dead stick. I feel the tick, pull set. The it, It's a madhouse fight. We have the power poles down, the fish is under the boat, in the power poles, under the log, into the lily pads. And finally, she makes two hard pulls under the log. There are no barnacles on this log and she floats up and it's a five pounder and change. And we win the tournament by four ounces. Last seven minutes go to weigh in. Ned Rig. Thank you very much, Ned Katie. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, listen, I, I, I credit I credit you with that win. Thank you. Ned, because of you, we've I've caught more fish. I've had a more enjoyable time on the water using that technique. Um I love it. It's always tied on, whether it be largemouth, smallmouth, the big TRD, spotted. the regulars, spotted everything. I just they everything eats. A I'm a I'm a Ned Rig fanatic as as well. So thank Let you. Let me oh, tell you yeah. one one thing. We uh, Drew Drew Reese took Daniel Nassam the de, de, from from Z Man down saltwater fishing last year down in Florida. Oh wow! They used the new rods, four pound test line. No way. Saltwater fishing and. Uh, <laughs> Of course, for Z-Man baits, uh, and they way lay them. They were catching seventy-five fish, or the, you know, or more fish per outing, and it just bam, bam, bam. And they had a guide. They had had a guide. I'm going to tell the story probably a little bit wacky, but they, they had a guide uh, one day, and one of his fellow fellow guides called him and said, uh, "How are you doing? We're really, really struggling." He said. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we we have I think we have seventy five fish. He said. <laughs> he says, 
He said, what? And they, he said, what are you doing? He said, we're throwing four contest lines. How about said, that? Said, and they were just fishing like we called the Midwest finesse. We go saltwater fishing. And actually, you can look on uh, Z-Man's uh, website uh, under the chatter. And uh, we, we, we published a story about how they catch it. So it's really kind of an eye-opening thing about how they use these five foot four and five foot eight rods with four pound test line can you can use in coat for redfish fishing and snook fishing and all that stuff too. So it's kind of an amazing thing. So just give it a look on Z on Z Man's uh, uh, web web page called the Chatter. It's kind of kind of mm -hmm. a really interesting uh, story. It, I feel like if I was forced to only use Z Man the rest of my life and all their products, I would be fine. <laughs> what would be your one Z-Man product, Travis, Ooh. if you could only, and what's the technique that you employ? One rod, one reel for the rest of your life in New York, what's it going to be? Color? Mm. Uh, we know it's a one ten ounce Ned Locks. Come on, right? It has to be, right? Man, that's a tough one. Uh, you got to uh, answer it. Ned did. I hate to say it, the but the finesse TRD, but I don't want to be that guy. Okay. Well, you so have gonna... to be. What, what color? Yoga pants. There it is. Black. Yoga Blackish. Oh, wow. How about that, Ned? Wow. Yoga yeah. pants. Yoga but pants. the minnows, the minnows is right up there. Okay. And the well, TRD tubes is right up there. Ooh, but I really? don't but I fish it on a Ned head just like a regular Ned. I don't think I've ever seen you catch one on the tubes. You, you only bring that on. You do a lot of things, Eric. I don't know bring out everything. you don't bring out the where, real good where does, stuff. Where does, when the I'm with you. Z, where does the tickler Z fit in? <sighs> hmm. Good question, Ned. It fits I, in. It fits in. So is the hula stick. I, I don't know. Um, I, I just don't see you throw it, man. He he must reserve it for non-tournament situations. I, like I got, maybe he would have given me the tube when we were fishing the small mouth crush open. He sponsored a tournament on the Great Lakes, man. And you know what? I should have been strolling behind him. I I, I, I really should have been. Yeah, you really should. Because you know he's. he's I'm, I'm going to give there. you since since you're a guest on the show. What do you got? I, I'm just going to flash this out there. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to hold uh -oh. this up. That's all I'm oh. saying. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's all I'm saying. Good. <laughs> okay. Good. Very good stuff. Yes. This has been fascinating. I Very love good. it, man. I Ooh. love it. What a show. Ned, thank you. Thanks well, for coming well, on. Seriously. Well, great, great talking to you. I learned I learned quite a bit myself, guys. You taught me a lot. <laughs> Outstanding. So Are you is your is your rod gonna come out with mud hole? Are they going to be just selling the blank or is this rod gonna be made? People were asking, well, and the one you know, thing we didn't cover, what's know, the action of the blank? We don't know the action of the blank. You didn't talk about well, it. Uh, let me tell you where you can find this out too. You look okay. wired to fish. Yes. Has a has we did a story about it. And okay. Wired to fish published it. And uh, okay. give it a look. But I I think it's gonna come out mud mud hole is gonna be part of it. Maybe Z Man's gonna be part of it. You know, okay. They're working with Drew with Drew Reese on it. And uh, okay. so it's uh, but it I it, it's all I'm hoping it comes out because uh, it's yeah, it makes a big difference for me. And boy, it's, it's a big change for an old 82 year old guy to change his way. He's been fishing since 1970. It's a it's a major step, you know. And so yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, you know, I've always been a I've always been a Tennessee handle fanatic and uh, yeah, me and too. Fishing man. fishing the, the stinger rods that that, uh, that that Ray Fink made and stuff like that. But uh, this stuff here is. Uh, it's incredible. It really Next is level. Incredible. Is it a medium light or a medium action rod? Uh, what would you say? Where does it load? Light. It's medium so, light right okay. now. You know, they're, okay. They're, they're working on they're working on a, 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 a new blank that's a okay. little bit just a little bit stouter. You know. Okay. Because they uh, they realize that most people really probably can't use as, as quite as light as, as as we have right now. And okay. This is a cut down version from their from a six foot ten rod okay there is so but you can look look it up on where wired to fish it's wired to fish is, 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 a, is a writer about it he goes to tell you about the history how this thing started so it's pretty okay it's if it, drew reese i got all of the information from drew he's not a, none of my stuff this is all drew and i just i just happen to be the guy that's writing about it that's one reason why 
the thing is Ned Rick too, because I wrote a lot about this stuff, you know. And I'm not, sure. You know, I borrowed most of the stuff from what guys like you taught me, you know. I'm, I'm yeah. Not, so you guys, all the fishermen in the world have been running around to help me. And Guido Hibbs into Bill Ward, Virgil Ward, and Harold. Man. Nancy. I just happened to be around a, a lot of great fishermen, and I, some of them were kind of, kind of got into my soul too. I for somehow I was just lucky. Man, that uh, you know, but great writers like you. And fishermen and anglers are able to meet people who are really, really good at a technique and extract that information out and present it to the public in an interesting way. Yeah. You know, that's what a writer does, right? When when we do a show or I read an article, that's what inspired me to to try a Ned rig. Okay. I, you know, I I I obviously grew up around a jig head worm. I fished a jig head jig head worm. It was a Berkeley power worm, four inch. I used the grape or blue fleck. It's a great tidal water river color. It's a finesse worm because it's four inches. It's the curly tail. Mm -hmm. And I used it on an Oldham screw lock jig head. It was weedless. It didn't need to be, but I felt like I needed that weed guard. And mm -hmm. I threw the 16th ounce or eighth ounce and I caught so, and it was a naked jig head. It was silver. Yeah. Uh, you know, was there any magic to the silver? I don't know, but it worked. I, I would sharpie it sometimes if I felt yeah. like the silver was too much, you know, and then I got into nail polish, but I cannot tell you the number of fish on eight pound test, no braid to fluorocarbon because braid wasn't even in the conversation right. back then. And it was Berkeley, Trilene, XL, or some type of Stren. And I would pitch that around grass edges, dock pilings. I'd fish it deep. I'd fish it shallow. I'd drag it. I'd drop it. I'd pop it. I'd snap it. <laughs> I caught so many tidal river bass on it. And you know what? I can't remember the last time I put that in my hand on a spinning rod. Now I've got an addiction to tackle, as you can see behind me. Um, yeah. I love to try new techniques, but uh, you know, the dead uh, rig fascinated me when I first read the article in, in fisherman and then followed you in Midwest finesse, uh, their forum and your articles and your logs are just are incredible. You inspire people to try that technique. So I know a lot of people thank you. I got a chance to fish with Larry Nixon, the general, because I yep. bid on a half-day trip with him. We were on Lake of the Ozarks, or Bull, Bull Shoals, Bull Shoals, sorry. And um, went to uh, see him, and guess what he had on the deck? He had a Ned Rig, a Super Spook Junior, and a Buzz Bait. And the Ned Rig color that he threw was Copper Truce. Copper Truce. And, and we had the same little Japanese Ned head, a super light with a, a, a mono double weed guard. Weed guard. Very, yeah. very, very micro hook. I probably have it back here, but um, it wasn't the shooting ball head. It's anyway, it's behind my trophy. I, I'd show you, but it was, a, it was just a very, very light. And we, he goes, I want to catch fish today. And guess what? And he was so upset that the Ned was growing in popularity so that co-anglers that got in his boat, he started to see it around Beaver Lake. I think he won that tournament or, yeah. or finished high. But um, he said, man, he had that to himself for years and it helped him earn a lot of checks. So anyway, yeah, that's I, a Larry a Larry Nixon story for you. Yep. I, I, I was actually with Larry down on Beaver Lake the year after I fished with I did the story on 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 Shin. So, uh, oh wow, Larry Larry used to run around with Stacy King. Sure, they, they used to they used to room together on the tournament tail. Stacy King's a good friend of mine. He, Love uh, Stacy. What actually, a teacher! Stacy King came up here to Kansas. He lives in down by Springfield, and he came up and did a a, 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 a Bass Pro Shops TV show about fishing the rig, how to fish it in December. Actually, the water temperature was 38 degrees. Unbelievable. About 20% ice on this lake. Wow. And uh, we were fishing coontail, and he shot a TV show in three hours. He said, that's the first time I've ever shot a TV show in three hours. <laughs> you caught and somebody fish on the dead. We caught 33 bass that day in three that's hours. That's crazy. And so... Uh, and were, you we were you throwing a Z-Man? We were you a lunch with that thing <laughs> <laughs> were you throwing a Z-man bait or another style bait at the time? Uh, we were actually throwing Z-man that day. Yeah, we okay. were throwing we were throwing a uh, ring minnow, a and a uh, zinker Z. Yeah, and uh, and he was actually also throwing a a a marble j a hair jig with okay. a, uh, a a little pork chop, a one hundred one pork oh, chop. Oh yeah, I caught my biggest largemouth bass on the Potomac on a hair jig with a one hundred one pork chop. Yeah, yeah it was an eight black ounce, so. Yep, this was, was this was all doing this was all doing Midwest finesse fishing. He was just this was 2010. 
it was December 10th or something, and it was mm. cold and water temperature was 38 degrees. And we had wow, we were fishing coontail. Yeah. That's incredible. Well, yeah. I mean, more, more better grass, more better bass is what I say. Um, <laughs> if it's right. crispy and green, it's, it's still the green of the winter. Degree water temperature, yeah. They'll be shallow. You're right, man. Yeah. Our river fish yeah. stay shallow all year. No yeah. question. There's yeah. always a group of fish yeah. shallow. Uh, that's extraordinary. Great stories. Do you still write for the Midwest Finesse Forum? Uh, uh, no, I don't. No, or I, contribute. I, I, what okay. I'm doing, Z-Man is publishing our, our monthly guides, our monthly okay. uh, logs. Yep. And that's, that's all I'm doing. You know, okay. it's just, uh, they, they run from about 10,000 to 20,000 words that we do, you know, just, uh, we just, oh, wow. uh, just what, what our logs are and it's just pure fit, pure fishing, what right? The water temperature is what the weather was and how many fish we caught, where we caught them, how we caught them, you know, so that's just, awesome, man. Yeah. We don't, we don't know why, but we know, we know how, where, and when, you know, everybody that's asks us cool. why we caught them. I have no idea. The fish never tell me. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. This has been incredible. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. All right, yeah. Ned, we'll let you go. We appreciate your time and we will, uh, you're always welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, thank Please you. come back, man. Okay. We'll All talk right. to you thank soon. You. Thanks, All Ned. Right. Thank Have you. a great evening, man. Tight lines out there. Bye-bye. Take right. care. See you. Bye-bye. Man. Good wow. stuff, man. That was awesome. Yeah. Incredible, man. That was incredible. Five That's foot four good. inch rod, dude. Mm -hmm. Well, he's not fishing like you. He's fishing lakes and ponds and reservoirs, shorter casts, you know, grass edges, cover structure. I get it. Fa four pound test, though. Fascinating. There's something about it. <laughs> <sighs> he's All a right. light line. He's a light line guy. Imagine that. You uh you tell you me. To, you wanted me to bring up this video you sent me. Yeah, I was involved in a controversy earlier today. That's what I'm so so TK. See if you're listening, if you're watching TK Stanley, this one's for you, man. He put me in some hot water today, and then everybody jumped in. So mm. raise your hand right now if you were watching TK Stanley at Tacklecraft earlier today on his live. It's I haven't even seen this. I don't even know what this is. All right. So uh somebody uh, he's talking about lipless baits, right? Like sleeper lipless what's your favorite lipless why is it your favorite lipless and somebody says uh well well eric thinks the the, the storm little tex is a sleeper like somebody says uh, oh he put it in his uh lipless vibration box and i'm like man i want to i want a trivia question <laughs> on that bait on anyway so listen here it is crankbait what's my problem no you said lucky strike. Lucky strike. Pause strike. it right there. Early Pause it right there. Pause it. Pause. What? All right. This company. I asked this company because nobody knows this bait, right? Who knows mm -hmm. this bait? I'm going to hold it up before we put it up. Who knows the manufacturer of this bait? And I say uh, it's a famous crankbait company, arguably the best cold water crankbait uh, uh, you, you know, cold water crankbait and Travis. And I said, what's the manufacturer? And tra Travis, you say lucky strike, lucky strike. He is known for a famous crankbait. Lucky strike? No. <laughs> Did he just say They're lucky strike? Famous early season cold water, high mountain reservoir crankbait. I just gave it away. That now I've given the manufacturer away. It is one of the best us. I see a storm. Okay, does anybody have you got that right? Who's got the name? Nobody's got the name yet. So it is a storm. I'll confirm. John Nee knew it was a storm. Look at John Nee. Think about a uh, state. You gotta be old. Everything's bigger in Texas. All right. So this is a little text ah, by storm. And this joker will go through anything if you take off the back hook. I only got a couple, so I don't throw it. But anyway. I don't, I don't throw, throw it. You, you can pause it right there, man. That's good. Man. That's hey, good. Yeah. <laughs> pause it. Pause it. Everybody's saying I threw it, man. There it is. The storm uh, little text. I don't need we that. showed it on the secret lipless show, right? This is just a novelty, man. I think I won a, a trivia question on Bass University. Mark Daniels was showing it, and somebody's like, whoever could guess this bait, We'll send out a, a pack to, you know, a Bass University gift pack. And I knew it was mm -hmm. Storm Little Tex, man. That there is an go. odd looking bait. Who else there out there? Here's a quick question for you. Takes the back hook off their lipless bait when they're ripping it through grass. 
You ever done that? Yeah, back I'll put a off. blade on the back sometimes. Nice, man. I got my uh uh what are they called? So anyway, I I asked you to Never. show that clip so I could clear my okay. name. I got two go. three of these baits. There's one up there, one here, and the other chrome. Hopefully we somewhere. cleared your name. Hey man, thanks, because it was a controversy, dude. Tim Maynard. <laughs> what else is happening, Trav? Speaking of clearing your name. What you got? I've read from front to back this New Ooh. York State freshwater fishing regulations guide. That's incredible. And I see nothing about a hundred yards from a ladder, a fish ladder. Uh oh, we got the bots on again. They come and go. Tim Maynard, that's funny. That's right. They were talking about the ugliest lipless vibration baits. There were some ugly uh -huh. ones that TK was showing. <laughs> TK is watching. <laughs> um, listen, TK, why are we so happy today when I was getting roasted, bro? I've never seen TK smile that big in recent weeks. He was loving it, man. He loves that kind of stuff, man. I deserve it, though. I'm a lure hound. Little Tex. Now, this is a whiz bang. What the hell am I talking about? This ain't even a storm, little Tex. There's another one up there. It might be the little Tex. Oh, yeah, that's the one. I held up the wrong bait. Shows you what I know. Yeah. Now I'm really confused. Look. They look the same, but they're not. Look. Almost the same shape. Which one's the little Tex? That's Nobody the whiz knows. bang. I know, right? That sure does look like a storm. Anyway. Go ahead. What else you got, uh, man? Um, A couple of questions. So any viewers out there that can help me out with this question I have, please reach out to me. So you read through the regulations. There's oh, no, yeah, there's yeah. no Maybe rule. No are rule. you go? Are you going? I to, sent in my sh paperwork. You, yesterday. You're going to court. You're not going guilty. to court. I wrote on there, not guilty. When's your hearing? They'll get back to you. They'll get back to me. I got gotcha. you. Nice, I'm not man. guilty, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I was watching both Darius. I was on Instagram and YouTube. It's funny to see which one went faster. Sometimes YouTube was faster. Sometimes Instagram had the delay. Fascinating, right? Mm -hmm. Anyways, which one at St. Chris? Which Viva Top Water, man? Yeah, I got a couple of Viva Top Waters. Talking about that little one up there. Anyways, which guys, for the ice anglers out there, I have a serious question. Uh, I have a couple questions. Talk about that one. Yeah. Anybody know that one? And do you know what that does? There's a secret secondary action. Anyway. Keep going, bro. Just no, ignore I, me. I'm just, just ignore me right now. Just keep talking. All right. So what is that? Is that what you're going to put me in when you're towing me off the ice because I'm frozen? Maybe. <laughs> uh, okay. So a couple of questions. So first of all, I need to know if I should get an ATV or oh. a side-by-side. -side. And oh. so I'm thinking the Can Am Defender, Defender, the Polaris Ranger. Uh, I like Honda, but they don't seem to make a four. I need a crew cab. I need four. I need a front and a back. Just if anyone ice fishes or has any opinions on that, I'd love to hear it. So I'm going with the Otter uh, Shack, and then I wanna, I wanna have one of these behind the shack to pull and I'm going to customize this to fit everything in there nicely. But then I want to put another one. If I get an ATV behind it to carry two guys out on the ice, if I have to, um, so that that's my question when it comes to ice anglers, if anyone knows, I'm honestly, I don't, and listen, I'll show you what I, I so if we look up can am defender, if i could bring up some images so so here's one that's not enclosed but so i need to know and i'm not going to spend four grand on the fiberglass topper for this but i want to be able to put to use this space back here and make an enclosed something so if you could if you know where i can find that information then this is what i'll go with now another thing i don't i don't know 
if I should get this one with the closed door, because then you can have a heat heater and everything. But listen, if if I'm going to spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on the ice in the next 20 years, Good luck. I'm going to probably dump it through the ice at some point. Hmm. What I need to know is, are you going to be in it? A closed system. <laughs> is that a death trap? Versus <laughs> an ATV where you can pretty much just hop off. And if you're in the water, you know, you got your striker flotation suit on. You got your picks. You can get out of a predicament. You're really not going to die in this day and age with the right equipment, unless you're trapped inside something that's going to the bottom in 20 feet of water. So that's a legit concern. I'm just curious what people think about that. Um, my next question, you guys, I, I went fishing. Remember I was on the drift boat kick. Drift yeah. boat Kick for salmon and trout. You mean like for a week? Yeah, so my buddy Kent has a Lund, Alaskan, and I feel like this is going to be the perfect boat, the 2000 series right here. Why don't you just rent his? <laughs> this would be the perfect <laughs> boat for salmon and steelhead in the particular bodies of water that I fish because I can also troll for them in the rivers, Yeah, and I can put my waders on and crash this thing up against rocks and all that. But then I can also go early season brown trout fishing, Perhaps some of the ramps aren't even open yet. We could probably lift this thing off the trailer, move it across the ice, go out brown trout trolling. Yeah, make sure you uh, video that stuff. Okay. Um, another thing is <laughs> I can also duck hunt. I can actually go out and probably shoot some divers or sea ducks hmm. out of this rig. So I won't have to spend the 65 grand on a a big duck boat just yet. I can get by with just this. So – the problem is I just priced this thing out What's and that, it came Ron? well over 40 grand for a brand new. Why don't you uh, buy used? Buy, buy, buy if used. you can find me a 20 oh. foot Lund that's used I got tiller with a mercury four stroke, please let me know where I can find that boat. Because there you go. Put the I'm word out, beat everybody. It up. I yeah. don't want a brand new $40,000 boat that's going to literally get torn up by rocks and sure. just. You know what I mean? I'm I'm gonna beat up a boat. I don't want to spend forty grand on a boat. I'm gonna beat up. Yeah, it's got to be a sense. twenty foot Alaskan, though. It's got to be that boat. Yes. If any of you guys know, yeah, that's great. Put the word out, man. Everybody. Somebody might have know somebody. A lot of people from New York watch this. I mean, this is a kick ass boat, though, dude. Like, it's it got everything. Why don't you call them up, man? Should they be sponsoring you or something? Got to got to ratchet up the sponsorship. Wrap that thing up. You would think, bud, but. <laughs> Texas Shad's Steerman. That's right. <laughs> We're still on the lipless thing, man. Keep going with the boat, though. What color are you going to get? Well, I'm going to paint it. I don't like oh, the mossy oak color or. Man, what? what? So now you got to paint it? Oh, yeah. The mossy oak color is not good enough. So some of these side by sides are ridiculous, Eric. How much are they? God, how much do you want to spend? I don't have a clue. I honestly don't. Are they um, five grand, ten grand, fifteen uh, grand? Well, 20? this one here is thirty thousand dollars just for this, and that's not even a four seater. You're gonna have a couple hundred thousand dollars in toys. <laughs> you got to. But I'm not gonna, gonna be spend. Like a, it's gonna be like a mortgage. I'm not going to spend 30 grand on a side by side, but I'm just saying. There's isn't, there a you, isn't there a used one out there? You These are get? all used. I'm on Facebook Marketplace right now, dude. 30 grand for a used one? Yeah. What? You get a car for that. What is that? That's like a dune buggy with wheels. I don't get it. That is seems like. Why don't you get one of those and tow your shit out there? You have to have people holding on to you, like some dude holding on to you. Like, I'm not riding that with you, by the way. What do you mean? I'm not grabbing you around you to hold on as we go out to the ice. I'm not even going ice fishing. People, grown adults, can you can wrap your hand around another if you're on the four-wheeler. That's fine. Won't be me. <laughs> so this is a 2015, Eric. So it's a few years, and they still want 20, 21 grand for that beast. It looks like it hasn't been used at all. 
It looks that nice. Like cherry. So you're saying, like, if you break through the ice and the doors are closed, do you have a fighting chance? I'm yeah, not betting right. on anybody getting out of that if you just go head first <laughs> into the ice. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know how fast they sink. I mean, you, get, you probably got a few seconds to get out. Do you have your seatbelt on? Uh-huh. I mean, I, I know they have seatbelts. You're probably not wearing your seatbelt. But are you going through the windshield? Does that windshield open up to give you a chance to shoot across the ice? Eric, when I'm when I'm in? when I'm when I'm heading out out on Shamo Bay in I'll mid February when it's I'll negative say. ten degrees out, I think that window's down and the heater's on, bud. Yeah, and I'm at home watching. All right, let me read something. some of these comments because maybe the answer's already here. What do we got? Uh, Kubota, uh, why are you breaking through the ice again? What? Who's going out on a guided ice fishing trip? Holy crap, there's a lot of stuff. Um, Upgrade the windshield to grass. A poly windshield is garbage. There's a there's a lot going on here. Oh, I haven't been reading any. I've been looking. Everyone's got an opinion, dude. That's the problem here. You should really consider a snowmobile. A snowmobile Nothing better I don't for you. think. Uh, no, nah, I don't want a snowmobile. Uh, just get a four-wheel. Some, some side-by-sides can go 80. There's too much information there. I can't get involved in this, man. <laughs> Everybody's like, get a snowmobile. Uh, <laughs> then you got to be hardy because you're out with the elements. But at least you got a fighting chance to get off, man. I guess. Uh, what's the return on investment for ice fishing? If you're busy ice fishing, will we have time to make lists? <laughs> they cost way too much. <laughs> My is that really in there? <laughs> It is. Travis Stearman, thank you very much. If you're busy ice fishing, when will you have time to make lists? Yo, E. All right. I got a cat video from Brian the Carpenter. <laughs> BTC. Hey, I got to share something with you, Eric. I don't know if like, you've seen my latest video. Which one? But these peeps did not go easy on me at all. Show me. So, if you want to be oh, healthier, you've got to get cachava. Cachava <laughs> a month ago. All right. So I I go fishing Fine, in my fish. usual outfit. I like boots and short shorts. Okay, oh, that's been I my theme they, this year. I bet they savaged you on this one. I noticed Dude, that. Let's go through. Oh. Let's go through the haters. Okay, Anthony, you'll never see me wrapped in twenty layers because I ain't going ice fishing. Um, let's see. <laughs> Not happening. Out there styling like a five-year-old who dressed himself. <laughs> um, 70s porn shorts. <laughs> those boots look real comfortable to fish out of. Look at Travis and those Daisy Dukes. <laughs> Not sure... Not sure if you're fishing a derb, going to milk the cows, or running a marathon. <laughs> milk the cows. That's <laughs> classic. I, I, I didn't understand the marathon thing, but right, running shorts. All right. Yeah. That's pretty good. Dude, I was laughing at these comments. Anyways. Oh, man. When they were roasting me for throwing the little text, man, I was dying, man. I was... But then, then again, I want to make sure people do it wasn't true. <laughs> I should have just enjoyed the roast. Oh. Maybe you want to drink a beer. Ooh, I almost hung myself in a Budweiser beer can lure. Mm. Crazy, man. God. Hold on. That's funny, man. Village people ban. BTC. Adagram. <laughs> no, David Stottlebar. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. I've done my share of walking on the ice and playing hockey. And man, that used to skeeze me out. Harold as a kid says, hang around ice. till next year and you'll get a great deal. Good deals are coming. I kind of agree with that. So That's, I, well, I, I'm yeah, leaning towards a can, um, uh, uh, an AT. So I want to kind of, I want to fish this winter ice fish. Oh, so I priced out a trailer too today. Good night, man. You got. Well, you need a trailer, right? bro. For what? So, if anyone knows a good eight by five 
by 20 foot enclosed trailer that would have enough ceiling height. So it's got to be the, I think the standard six and a half. I'm going to need at least an eight foot tall in case I do get, I, I don't want to buy a trailer and then be stuck down the road, not being able to fit one of these bigger side by sides in. And so, wait a minute. You mean you're going to get, you, so when so you're I need going that, ice fishing, I you're need driving to, to your place and then you're yeah, getting your side by side. Up. Put the side by side in and then I'm going to run five well, shafts. Why don't you just, don't you just put it shacks. in the back of a truck? I have one guided trip with me and I'll have four shack rentals a day. So okay. now you got to have four shacks too? I need four shacks, yes. Well, I think the first thing is get a house. Well, yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I'll, I'll worry about I, that later. I love I got it. Till July, bud. Hey, let me ask you a question. Is the Perch fleet of boats, the Perchtastic, uh, SS Perchtastic out? Are you going to do that anymore? <laughs> yeah. You're doing that too? Mm -hmm. gonna oh, yeah. I have a whole list thing? here. So, guys, let me do bring that a, up. Do you have a clone? You, you might need to clone yourself, bro. Let me bring up my list. I love it. You're thinking big, bro. That's good. Um. Bear with me, bud. I'm with you. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. 2022. Nope. <sighs> Updated 2023 rods. Nope. 2020. There it is. Okay. Here we go. So, and there's my 2024 calendar. Where's my 2023 calendar? Okay, here we go. Uh, so in 2023, I'm going to be offering a full day bass trip, just like I always do. We're going to also do a bass trip in the evening. So we'll have a five-hour evening trip during July, August, probably July and August. What so, are the hours for the evening trip? Uh, four to eight, four to dark. There you go. We'll have a special Ontario season. Um, so that's going to be a little bit more pricey, and that'll be a little more hardcore. Uh, but that'll be in the months of April. We're going to have a salmon and steelhead trip. That's a full, well, five-hour day. And we're going to have an evening salmon and steelhead trip. Then we're going to have a, a six-hour duck hunt. And we're also going to have a four-hour um, perch. Perch, 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 I would, perch I would call it per, perch tastic trip. Perch tastic trip. I think and you make the name called perch tastic. If you guys would like to bring your uh, families up, you can hire me to do the carp spearing, e the evening booze cruise slash uh, tour of the St. Lawrence River on my pontoon boat. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay. I, which which is is it all happening at once or like is there pretty much bud a planned progression mm, it's gonna happen quick okay we're gonna we're gonna work very hard for two years three years and pay all this shit off right on man because it ain't gonna be just some cheap old 18 foot pontoon from craigslist <laughs> you're gonna get the nice one it's gonna have nice you're gonna you're, you're gonna, gonna you're gonna enjoy your time on the river with me you're getting the hundred and fifty thousand dollar pontoon. Wow, let's go that far. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap! I mean, if you're talking nice pontoon, they could be, you know. I, know. I don't know what they cost, bro. I I'm so scared to even look. I don't. It'll just, you know, it'll just, it just keeps adding up. You got a half million dollar toys right there, maybe more. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna use the same truck? <laughs> yeah. So I I'm gonna have to get that uh, Denali, a GMC Denali, HD twenty five hundred. What's that cost? Let's just go through it. Let, let's start at the top. Oh, I'm, right. I'm just curious. You got the house, seven fifty. All right, yeah. write that down. Seven fifty. Somebody add this up out there. That's an accountant. Seven fifty for the house. Know, but... I want to know Denali. How much? Ninety. Holy shit! That's eight fifty. <laughs> All right, we're up to eight fifty. Uh, side by side. The one I really want. Yeah, thirty-five thousand. All right, that's uh, that's uh, eight eight fifty. That's uh, uh, eight eighty five. All right, pontoon boat. Call it sixty. 
let's call it 60. 945. Duck boat? 65. 40. Oh, 945. The big water duck boat. Yeah, we're up to a million. Okay. What else did you need? How, how much are the, uh, the, the houses? The, the salmon boat. Oh, shit. That's another one? That was 40, that Lund. Oh, a million 40. How, how much did the little ice huts cost each? Oh, They're cheap. about two grand a piece. Okay, eight grand. And I'm okay. Let's not million. count the ice augers and the fishing rods and all that. Well, let's just add a hundred grand for that. So we're up to a million, one million one hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. I do want a um a uh a, a kayak that I can duck on as well. <laughs> Travis That's... Stearman said, "Don't forget the the voice lower." <laughs> I can't even say it. So that's you two grand. Me. So that's Wait, two grand for the kayak. That's not added, bad. Added 50 for the divorce lawyer. And then you're going to lose half your assets. So you got to account for that. Uh, Stearman, okay. that is funny. <laughs> Hell yeah. He's going to go for alien encounter sightings for sure. But glue and duck. You should <laughs> definitely do that with UFOs. Um, you have to do a UFO tour, dude. And just talk and then about I do want you know. I do want a John Deere oh the trailer some sort of tractor I don't know what they cost what do they say thirty five used thirty far you're you're like one point two million so far the trailer yeah and then oh one and then 1. once I get all that 40, I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna kind of go out on the fringe here one point three if we're saying everything I want I would like some sort of uh, airboat or hovercraft as well. Like an alien hovercraft? No, just something I get on uh, uh, open water and ice. Doesn't. Oh matter. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, hovercraft. I don't know. What do they cost? I don't know. Ah, you're into it, a million five, man. That's it. Okay. That much? So you finance try. that over twenty years. At nine <laughs> percent. I'm not sure what to do, man. I think you gotta get the house first. You no, just I got go ice fishing this winter. First things first, you got to get to New York. I have three months to go up ice fishing to get ready. Well, you're going to start ice fishing this year. Not guiding. I just want to go ice fishing in February. So I need just, a trailer. I need a four-wheeler. I need a system to carry all my ice fishing stuff out there. You want to learn the ropes, find the fish, figure out how to do I, it. I, yeah, I just want to start doing that. Okay. I don't know how to – I don't even know what – I don't even know. I don't know nothing about it. Well, a trailer. You do have to get the new trailer. Can no, you get a used no. Trailer? I quoted a new one. The guy came back at eighteen grand a day. I can find one used for ninety five hundred. Okay, ninety five hundred for the trailer. You need an ice hut, right? One, just two one, grand. two grand. Eleven five. You need a side by. Can you at least just deal? with I can a get an eight thousand dollar ATV. Yeah. All right. So you're twenty. Call it twenty. Some ice fishing equipment. All in twenty grand to start ice fishing and learning the ropes. Mm -hmm. that's a good plan yeah you could start small yeah figure mm -hmm. it out does kent have any of this stuff all he's got is an 18 foot lun man can you tow can you drag it out on the ice <laughs> no can you retrofit it with some hovercraft a circular hovercraft build it up around it no. float out there on the ice no man i don't know bro has anyone found a 20 foot lun for me yet used No, uh, there's got to be. Where do you look? This boat, I looked on Boat Trader. I go on Google. That's a good, that's a good uh, today start. Today I spent today. I Facebook spent Marketplace. So, I thought that was good. That, I spent so much time today trying to figure out these ATVs and side by sides. It was so frustrating because once you find the perfect one, then you have to find the accessory. What do you mean? Like, what do you mean the accessory? Like to the, the storage to the crime? and. And oh, do all yeah. that. Can you store it at Kent's? Yeah, that's another sorry, thing. I got to find a place sorry, to store it. Sorry, right. sorry to lean on you, Kent. Kent's probably knows somebody up there with a field. There's so much land on. up there. Okay, cool. Well, that's good. Now, that's one thing you can get check off the list. Well, well, it show takes you the a ultimate. lot. Of, I tell you what, man. I think you got a taste of what it takes just to try to get one thing going. Breathing and moving. Check this. You're going to be at the diver? This, this is what I want Here's right here. Look at that thing. This is what I want, dude. Like a tractor. Oh, my God. 
This is probably a forty thousand dollar unit right here. It's like lost in space, man. The chariot. Yeah. What? What? Yeah, dude. Yeah. You can see yourself in that thing, dude, rolling down. Ain't doing it. <laughs> no interest in ice fishing. I have zero interest in ice fish. You know, I have a lake in Western Maryland. I have a house on, and that ice fish their ass off out there. Never done it. I want this want to topper for my side by side, but they go for four Those grand. Are the ranger that we had last year, I was showing you guys the... four grand <laughs> just for that stupid doors. box. What year was there? this ranger? Nineteen. Nineteen ranger, four door. What are cool doors? Did I mean, it is cool, man. Year. Doors. Look at this thing, though. <laughs> Whoa. They can do whatever you want. You can do two five-gallon bucket inserts. Yeah, man. That's crazy. Or stand up. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Oh, my God. And then, and now so I'm this debating. Is, this, is, this is where your day goes, right? This is what you do all day. You look at this stuff. As of right now, when I'm trying to plan, yeah. Ah, I got gotcha. you. I takes have off time. this week. I don't have to be up north till Friday. I got gotcha. you. It's good mm -hmm. to dream and plan. Mm -hmm. sobering but you you know what you want it's great to know or like in the area in the vicinity. i can make it work with subpar equipment i don't need all new sure but that's like i'm trying story. to be i'm trying to be fair with that lund boat knowing that i can still get out offshore and shoot sea ducks and i don't need a sixty five thousand dollar duck boat yeah and i can still salmon gut and fish and i can still Start messing around with early season browns and doing all that. Oh, that's yeah. Same boat. So that's yeah, not I mean, terrible. And I don't think yeah. this expect. Do I? Yeah. Am I going to go out and buy this Polaris Ranger with the nah. Pro Fab UTV topper? No. The Pro Fab UTV. But topper. I'll buy a eight thousand dollar, you know, Can Am four wheeler and do the work, and then you'll step up to the next level when you get the money after you've made some money. I got to right? get this shit paid off within two years. Any investment for guiding, it needs to be paid off within two seasons of guiding. Okay. That's my business plan. I like it. There you go. It's good ROI, right? So how many pontoon uh, evening tours are we going to have to do? Let's see. What's the cost? I also have about two other guides that are going to be working for me as well up there. So Who's that, that? I don't want to name names right now. Gotcha. So I know 30, I, I know one. Is it two letters? So 30 times say I can get 500 bucks for an evening pontoon boat trip. So if I did it every night in July, that's 15 grand. Yep. You do that three months, that's 45. So you can see, not that I'm saying I'm gonna be I don't know. I don't know if I could be booked up. There's advertising costs, you know, there's so much tourism there in A Bay and Clayton in the summer. I'm sure. sure people would love to be able to go out on a, on a pontoon, do the private tour of the castles, and 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 you know they bring a cooler of whatever they want to drink, and it, whether it be a family or you know between four and ten people, and I just hang out for four or five hours, give you the little grand tour, talk about the buildings, the historic stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Snow dogs. <laughs> is that is that a movie? Was that? No, it's probably a, There's a there's it's, another ice machine that I forgot what it was called. The something snow ice and water. It's got it. It's like a. It's a. It drives on land and water. Like I don't know. I don't know. Oh, there you go. Brian Masters Fishing, 04 Lund, 2000 on Marketplace for 27000 in Indiana. If you leave now, you can get there by the morning. Let me look at it. Uh, if you can send a link, Brian, or make sure it's a tiller, though. Got to be a tiller. You couldn't retrofit it? No, nah, it's probably not a tiller. It's probably a council or something. Council. Co council. You're close. You're getting there. Snow bear. Snow bear. The boomer so goes, if I says, had that much money to spend it on a guide service, I'd just keep all the money. 
<laughs> it's all pain. Yeah, right. Bud. It's all Take a half payment. million in investment and why work? <laughs> it's going to be payments. <laughs> He's got a point. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, Website. Oh, Jamie Newton just sent a link. Let's see. Website. 2,000 Lund Pro boats for sale. I'll send this to you, Travis. Okay. There she is. Let I don't know if see. it's... I don't know. You could look at the listing. Looks like a tiller. Oh, he's got a tiller. He's got a little motor and a big motor. Oh, I think I saw that, but it's two Yamahas, right? Those it, don't look like preferably Yamahas. They, they, Mercury. they don't look like Yamaha. It looks okay. like a Mercury to me with red and white writing. Okay. Yeah. 19. Uh, uh oh. I got to watch an ad. Anyway. I'm not looking at it. Oh, here I got somebody sent me a text. Make an offer. Why can't I open it up? It's over 60 days old. I think you got a motivated seller on your hand. Polish. It's that. a side council, bro. It's not a tiller. That's a that's a Lund Pro V, not Alaskan. Dude, I don't 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 oh, be coming maybe at I me to, like that. I had to scroll down. What'd you say? I don't, don't come at me like that. Don't I'm just trying to help, man. I don't know what the fuck it is. I'm just. This is what I'm you just... sent me, Eric. I did not send you that. Yes, you did. Jamie Newton sent it to me, and I just forwarded it to you. You clicked on the wrong thing. Who knows what comes up on your phone, bro? Don't even try to put me in another controversy today, dude. 2017 Lund, 2000 Alaskan Tiller. There it is. How much? It says call for a price. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. That sounds real expensive when they say that. Wow, that's the one, dude. Thank you, guys. Seriously, I'm going to look into these. There's one for 27.5. 2019 20-foot Lund Alaskan. Holy shit. All right. Thank you to whoever 515444 is. That one could work, dude. All right. I'm happy. See, I'm glad I got guys like you to help me sort through all this. Yeah, man. You got a, nice, you got a lot dude. of people chiming in, man. Yeah. 603 Bass just showed up. He might know somebody with a Lund. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, he does. He's up there. Who, who knows? Or if you guys that? have any other. Uh oh, dating Listen, site, dating I, site I alert, dating I, site alert. We're getting bombed again. Dude, dude, dude. I don't want to buy a new Lund because. Hey, he does. He does. 603 Bass knows somebody with it. Does he know a it's Lund? a 20 foot Alaskan? Well, that's with a your Mercury Tiller? Tell. 150 preferably. Okay, you heard it, 603 Bass. You got that in your arsenal? What's a snow bear? Snow dog people machine. Keep... No, snow bear. I, I saw snow dog, too. Oh, meanwhile, I got to pick the winner. Oh, come on, you guys. The, uh... I'm trying to save I... money. <clears throat> what? <laughs> Jeez. What happened? How much was it? I mean, listen... Look at these beasts. Pretty sure that's a little more than a side by side, Eric. Just by looking at the pictures. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> the next level, man. That's like the uh, I don't know, Rolls Royce of snow machines. Yeah, that's a little extreme there. Oh, man. <laughs> MJ goes, I can see after the third month in a row of booze cruises, losing your mind and speeding headfirst into a cliff. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, man. It does have to be a Mercury, guys. Willing to go $1.5 million in debt so I don't have to get a real job. <laughs> Oh, shit. 
That's funny, man. Oh, I got to pick the winner tonight for the uh, yeah, the Mad Hatter. Do. Yeah, how do you do that? Can you put these names into a random generator for me? I don't have one. Or do you, you want to pick the winner? You got to send my me last... the names. How do I send you the names? It wasn't mm. many. I mean, they got you, a pretty okay. good chance of winning. Here's what you can do, Eric. Can you count them up? Yes. And I'll hold on. pick a random number. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what I'll do. All right, hold on. Pick a number between 1 and 12. I'm just, I'm not going to use a random generator. I'm just going to pick one. Yeah, pick a, pick a random number between 1 and 12. He's eight. not looking at the post. 8. Okay, let me count it down. Somebody, somebody uh, commented twice. I'm not, I did not count the person who counted twice. So let's see. It would be number 8. And I'm just going in um, the order of... Well, wait a minute. Should I do newest first? How do I look at the comments? You could go top comments or newest newest first. What should I do? Newest first. All right, newest first, and I'll count down eight. All right, you ready? Anthony, seven seven seven, freak show flow. You're the winner. <laughs> freak show flow. Yeah, man. I'm going to I'm gonna message him. I'm like, dude, you won the random drawing. Send me your address. Anthony, if you're watching. Hmm. Freak show flu. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that's the first random drawing I've ever done. JP goes, you, you might want to work up to that one. Doesn't look like a starter snow machine. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, no. thank thank you, all eight people who commented. I appreciate it, man. Seven, I mean. No, it was more than that. I'm just kidding. It was 12. Mm. Thanks, Travis. It's been on my mind. Snow dog. That's the one, bro. So you basically need a half million for capital. Go get a small business loan from the SBA. Uh, I'm going to no. start small, dude. I mean, you could, you'll build up to it. I could see it. Mm -hmm. Look, you got to vision it first, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. Then you make it happen. Just like you did with the Small Mouth Crush brand, bro. Look at us now. 149 people watching on a Monday night. Just hanging out. <laughs> That's all we're doing. At this point in the show, uh, there's really not going to be too much more exciting. So if you guys feel like... Uh, you want to ditch off? Yeah, we're not. You're not going to hurt our feelings. No, no, definitely no, not. No. Good show night, though, Eric. I hey man, thanks for having that on. That was fascinating. I couldn't get my questions out fast enough. Hopefully, we answered everybody's questions in the stream. I thought I got a bunch of them in. I don't I know about so. you. I think we did okay, a good, good job. Yeah, man. Did you, are you? Did you? You didn't um, do a podcast with him, did you? No, first time I ever talked to him. That's awesome, man. Well, I mean, what a legend to have on, man. It was really cool that Travis Myers was here and listening in, you know, and, and posing mm -hmm. questions and commenting. I think he added a lot to the stream in the comments. So thank you, Travis Myers, if you're still watching. Good well, stuff, how much man. Is this thing. This stream goes along with the bad Monday night football game. <laughs> Who's playing tonight, MJ? Ned's leader length. Uh, that's the one thing we didn't ask him. But I know it's in some article that he's uh, probably written. It didn't sound like I don't think he'd be a he guy that would want this. Yeah, he us. wouldn't because I think he's new to that, like floral to to anyway. I don't think he would be a guy that would want the knot in his spool. So it's going to be six six foot on average. You know, most guys want that knot. I guess not past the first, the last guy, the one close to the reel. Yeah, because you get it spinning and then it starts clinking through your guides. You know what I mean? Somebody had mm -hmm. a good tip. Um, Instead of using scissors to cut the knife, because, you know, when you use scissors, it leaves that little sharp tail, flat clippers. Dude, Flips there is a straight. Lund 20-foot Alaskan. That's exactly what I'm looking for. 
Where to go? Gosh, I wonder if it's still available. Jeff, no, one... Travis, remember that prediction you made, Travis? That's off, right? What's that? No, you made some prediction. Oh, we got. The Is there a comment there, about that? Yeah. Well, well, let's click remember? on one. Let's see where it takes us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh... I mean, they're nice enough to show up. At least we could do I, is give them a click. I thought I blocked that one. Somebody asked about the uh, the prediction you made. We're well past the date that you made it. I tried to get the info out of them, and I couldn't get any detail, really. Uh, he always likes to extend those predictions out. Uh, so I was going off a of prediction. Pre predictions based off of that's what's going on we're saying dictions based off of fear and coming right. from a different standpoint in my life now i know there is true isometric pre pre predictions that i totally understand now but those isometric? are isometric but those predict predictions predictions are slightly it different than the ones i was subscribed to before which ones did you used to subscribe to? The bad ones, the ones that res that that spread fear and anxiety right. and get people right. fighting and put people in certain right. uh, camps, if you will. Sure, those were so not the right predictions. I got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. Good. It sounds like you're in a better place. Yes. Awesome. I'm trying to read these comments, man. They're awesome here. Yeah, fishing shows better than any football game. Nope, dude. But goddamn, we're close to making that happen. Legit had at least 10 mar largemouth, over six pounds, sitting inches off the bait on Saturday. Just couldn't get him to commit. What? Wicked frustrating. Hmm. Check out the Sherp. I don't know what that ah, means. Must be some sh other Sherp on ice. Must be some other mobile. Sherp ice fishing. Oh, man, that thing even looks. I can just tell you guys, the Sherp ain't going to come in under 10 grand. Utility, utility task vehicle. Hmm. Holy shit. Can I tell you something? Sure. So when I looked at the comments, Tires only because I, things. what is it? Sherp is a hundred K. Shut up. That's what somebody just said. Musky bites. It's right there, bro. That's cray cray. Look at that thing. Hey, look at that, man. Hey, man, you can go across land and water. Shit. <laughs> and you don't die. <laughs> Who cares if you break through the ice? <laughs> we Sherp can't do it. How much are those? A hundred thousand dollars. You can go through swamps. You could jump hunt. You could jump duck hunt. You could go down to Okeechobee. You go up to Alaska over rocks. It looks like <laughs> underwater through streams. Yeah, you have to wait. You won't die no matter what happens. No, good. <laughs> unless you run out of gas and freeze to death. <laughs> it's always a possibility, unless it runs on solar. Get the solar option. Okay. I don't know. Unless it's a blizzard and then you're screwed. Ah, That's you pretty cool. I'd say so, man. Put it on the wish list. Have like a wish list of really cool machines, man. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, isometric projections are true, you'll get them. Is All that right, part check of it? Out, check out the snow dog. Did I look at the snow dog already? Dude, I don't know. I can't keep track of all these things, man. Ah, <sighs> Not yet. Jesus. There was a guy on YouTube that was offering to give his Sherpa away if you could get it stuck. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's what Tim, <laughs> Tim Maynard just said that. Yeah, if you Sherpa get, is if interesting. You get, if you get that stuck, I'll give you my little text hanging behind me too, man. I'll throw that in. <laughs> just get a M1A1. What Hold is the case. I don't know. It's, I think it's a military vehicle. Pull the Camus with the Sherp. 
I the Sherps are cool, but you can only. It, I, I need a way to take four guys out on the ice safely. I don't think. Say, uh, listen to what you just said. I need to take people out on the ice safely. They just don't go together. There is no safely taking people. You got to have them sign that big waiver. If we all die, don't <laughs> sue my wife. Right. <laughs> it's an Abrams tank. That's right. You just shoot holes through the ice with that big old gun up top. The that sharp top. is pretty cool, man. I honestly think I'm going to get one someday. Awesome. If I could just figure out what language that website was in. Because I can't visualize something and manifest it without knowing the origins. So I have to look into it. I gotcha. So this is all, if you're visualizing things, they just show up in your yard. Uh, it ain't that easy. I know. I saw a shooting star this weekend. Okay. I didn't wish for a Sherp, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I really did. It's kind of cool, man. I see him all the time. You don't look Do up you? enough, bro. Oh, I've seen many up there. It was just one single night where one of the guests we had at our Deep Creek place saw a shooting star, Patty. Mm. And uh, they went in. I turned all the lights off, you know, let my eyes adjust. And like five minutes later, same area, this guy, another one shot by. I'm like, that's sure. cool. Yeah, it was pretty the, cool. Uh, the silicone will show you exactly what you want to see. The, the silicone. The silicone. Well, I got a lot of silicone in my life. Yes, you do. It's true. It's true. And in fact, I thought Anthony might win the random drawing. Now, granted, there are only 12. But that was the name I thought when I scrolled down, mm -hmm. and you picked it. Did I make you pick it? I, he won. I, I, no, I visualized it. Oh. I visualized it in, well, maybe not the silicone. Is there silicone in my brain? Here, this guy Where, offers. Hey, this where's guy the silicone? Real guided. quick. Where, where's the silicone before you ask guided? Where does the silicone exist? Is it in space around us? Where's the silicone? We're living in it, bud. Um, okay, so it's all around us. Got it. So snow bear day trips, three people for eight fifty. <laughs> Tacklecraft says you can put a cannon on top of that sherp and shoot Eric's collections of little texts for at least twelve duck seasons. Uh -huh. That's how many little texts I got back there. Yep. <laughs> TK, that's why I wore your hat, bro. It's Tacklecraft, by the way, everybody. Best crankbait painter in America. Travis knows. What's up? You want to see some TK work? How about that crazy mistake? Look so at now that. I'm supposed to buy a fleet of wait, snow dogs? Wait a minute, Travis. Did you see that? So everyone gets their own snow dog. I'm just going to okay. do a tackle craft show for you guys. Since so TK was cheapest... talking about crackle back in today. That's the black the most night, expensive man. expensive snow dog is $6,100. P.K. Stanley. 6,100 times four. The world's only Aaron Magic crankbait. Thank grand. you very much. Aaron Martins. You're still out in the elements, though. R.I.P. T.K. Stanley. Any videos crap. on this thing? You guys know what that crankbait is? Sound off if you do. What is it? It's in a freaking sled. Hey, Travis, remember this crankbait? Marty Burns, Big M. I do. St. Lawrence Slayer right there. Check that out. You don't see a lot of green pumpkin crankbait, so I'm just going to do a little show for everybody. TK Stanley show and Marty Burns show. Marty Burns. Log. Travis, you know you think that's sexy. Check it out. That is a Look good color. Dude! Come on, man! Now I'm just going to start breaking stuff out. because You do that, and I'm going to show you a snow dog. I know, man. I can't take it anymore, man. I can't look at any more snow machines. Because I don't like snow snowmobiling. Let's see. Where's my TK Stanley Burns box? Stop talking and show me how you use this thing. Okay, you're fine, man. I'm just going to do a little I saw this though. video. All these guys do is just catch little man, sunfish. There. All that work for that little bluegill, bud? All right. It's a good one. <laughs> Here we go. It's starting to get into it This now. is going to be cool. me in two years. All hey guys, Smallmouth Crush Ice Fishing Edition. And don't forget to join us live when Eric shows off a bunch of Marty Burn crankbaits. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> he 
exactly. Hell yeah. Ooh. That's Why can't sexy. I find a legit video of people using this thing? I don't know because nobody can afford it. Hey, Matt Johnson here with hey, Ice Matt. Team. You know, this B13 MER utility model from Snowdog is an absolute workhorse. We put these things through the ring. That's perfect. It's a little mini. Uh, Travis, that's the one you do. For the hunting season. That's affordable. It's super simple. And this model, which is the B13 MER, we ran the R models, which stands for reverse. We have a reverse toggle back. Oh, thank God. We're using a trailer, uh, maneuvering through tight quarters. Get me on the back lake, of our buddy. trailers. And then when it's time to go to the next spot and fish, we back them out. So that reverse is kind of convenient. Pass on a hard day with these. Uh, they're very efficient. So if you're looking for something that's efficient on fuel, especially with fuel costs, and on what you're towing. So like anything, if I'm, I'm at the daisy chain, with three of those of daisy chain fish you. traps, without anyone behind you, just by yourself, you're going to get 25-ish miles an hour on these things, maybe 30. They're easy to work on. There's not much to them friendly there's not a, really a lot to it in terms of flap on the back i'm gonna get M -E -R. we ran things. these with the sled last year fishing machine tons of efficiency snow dogs i would highly encourage it if you happen to be by the ice team booth at any show or event this season come on check them out and if you see one all right I'm just, it's it's just, got some potential i'm just showing off tk's work here man holy hell it does. It does. That's a nice one. If I day. There you go. Hmm. What else you got, man? I don't know, man. You got Let me know in the comments. That's I don't know about that one, but yeah, no, it's a thin fin, bro. You wouldn't know about it. Um I can't keep up with these comments. I can't. I wouldn't even look. I'm just doing a little show and tell for everybody while you were looking at snow machines because I was out. I couldn't look at one more. I just couldn't do it. Ooh, um, some early. Would anybody time. be interested in taking a? Would anyone? Would anyone come out ice fishing with me for a day? Guided trip up there, uh, Lake Ontario, some of the bays. I kind of know what I'm doing. <laughs> I do, bro. Believe it or not. I don't question it for a minute, man. I'll put you on them. I don't want to go ice fishing. But I appreciate that you do. And have to. And want to. And love it. It's just not my jam, man. Mm. All right. All right. What there do we got go. next week? I have uh, um, Jack B. Jack B. We got Brandon, we got who's that guy? Um, I just have a phone number, so I got five trips next week, bud. Nice. I'm just doing a little sideshow here. Brooks from Cortland Line is in the chat. He wants to Brooksy. go fishing. Take me steelhead fishing, bro. I'm putting my order in for five pound braid because Travis stole all you my. You ain't groceries. getting it. I'll put. I've, I've got order in for months, dude. Never shows up. I'm still looking for my first. I still. I got sweat stains on this old Cortland hat. I can't even get a new hat. I go in there for a podcast, uh, and I walk out with nothing. You didn't go. You didn't get any swag. Nothing. Not even a scarf. I swear, these people. They don't have a brook. Uh, a Cortland scarf. They got nothing, man. They're just bone dry. Brooks, I'm go forgetting. can't go fishing with you. I'll I'll get a <laughs> ticket. Hey, Cam said make Eric big in your video small. <laughs> <laughs> TK can paint his ass off. Marty uh, Burns makes a fine bait. Anyway, man, that's fun, bud. Really, really, really enjoyable. Yes. Frank Scalish did not like when I put lead on that rainbow trout. No. You could believe I had one. It took me a while to find it, but I knew I had one. Hmm. How about that? Hmm. I wish I could show you guys something cool, but I just I don't have anything to show right now. I got a lot of cool stuff if you just make me big. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. 
Here, I'll show you the latest video. Um, oh, yeah, show us that. It's a little bonus for everybody. Hey, Tim, Tim, you got it, Tim. You know what's up. <laughs> Don't ever do this. <laughs> oh my god that uh, looks like a a drowning insect <laughs> oh man we're working on that video right now it happens All right, we're just staring at each other, bro, at this point. We got to let go at some point here. It's 1040, right, dude. Bro. Dude, I thought we were only going to stream for an hour tonight. I got a big day ahead of me tomorrow. I got to look up. What happened to snow, that? Snowbirds and. You got more research and planning. Chirps this is, and all this shit. Look, this is R&D, dude. But how is the land research going for the house? I mean, isn't that the first things first? Like, you got to get there. I mean, these are all nice dreams and great visions. I know you're talking to the silicrome or the silicrome, but how, where are you visioning your house and is it coming along? Right now, I need a temporary place. And here's what I found so far. I'll share that with you guys. Are, Why not? Are you close? I don't know if this is the right, look, what right house for me, dude. Okay. <sighs> Is it close to your wife's work? Yeah. Well, there you go, man. It's the first part, right? Hold on. I, I, see, didn't, I, I didn't see this one yet, bud. All right. No. Looks, per looks perfect. Uh, You're uh, I'm isn't not this, feeling it. Isn't this temporary? Okay, gotcha. Show us the one you like. Oh. I don't, I don't see something you don't. Okay. <laughs> Jamie Juice Newton asked Tackle Crow Craft, can you make a special silicone color? That's funny. That's a funny one. All right, so here it is, Eric. So the garage is decent. The driveway is decent. Yeah, it looks good. I had to put a fence up and build a small shed. That's the one I'm leaning on right now. All right. It looks like a lot of land. It's a, it's, it's, it's <sighs> sure. It's, it would be a good temporary house and I probably should just do it. What's okay. What's the hold up? Nice the market's view. Gonna, the market's gonna crash, bro. This. So you're just gonna wait. You're asking too much. Okay. So you're gonna wait. When's the market crashing? What's the silicone say? I don't know. What, what you? When do you think the market will crash? I don't know if it it will. I don't know. Okay. Well, you just said it was gonna. <sighs> yeah. We, okay. So if the market crashes, how much would you save on that house? In your opinion. You've talked to me about this already. All right. So you're just going to wait then. Yeah. But remember, there's a flip side to the market crash. You get less for the house you live in. So you get double whammy. And the longer you wait, maybe the higher interest rates goes for a second. And that pushes the house prices down on both sides of the coin. So, it, it you know, it's all relative, right? You sell your house for more, you pay a little more on the back end. But remember, you're selling your house for more than you're buying the other house. You're going to have a positive gain. So mm -hmm. wouldn't it make sense to sell the expensive property by the cheaper property and stuff the cash in your pocket? Mm -hmm. And have some money for toys? I just want the perfect place to pop up this week. Vision it. Soliloquome it. <laughs>
Just just sleep in the soliloquy tonight. Vision it. Don't stress. Okay. You're not sending out the right vibrations. And if you wait another year, it might. I did go on the website. You want the perfect temporary place. Listen to what you just said. I want the perfect temporary place. Then I want the perfect full-time place. You know, sometimes you got to just settle for good enough because you understand that it's temporary. In order to get to the dream faster, you just got to settle. And it here's here's there's something in life called compromise. Maybe it's a savvy thing to do for a moment in time. Dude, Not I've forever. been compromising. Look at the truck I drive around in. A lot of people would say that's not a compromise. A compromise is shitty, rusted out, fucking F one fifty. What are you talking about, dude? You you it's don't compromise. Pretty... You wear Lululemons, dude. Don't. I'm about oh to. My... I'm about to uncork on you. Literally, that you don't know what compromise is. You, you know, I've owned this power pole hoodie dude, for over six years, bro. Dude, dude, dude. Here's the hand. Talk to the hand. You're kidding me, right? You oh think God. in your life today you compromise on food, beverage. Uh, fishing gear, boats, clothing, uh, vitamin supplements, um, equipment that you buy to do your film with. Where have you compromised in your life? Go. That's what I thought. I'm, I'm trying to think. Okay, you say it's a compromise to have your Chevrolet instead of oh. your big boy $100,000 truck. I got it. It's all relative, right? You have, you have champagne taste. So maybe you've been compromising on champagne taste. I get that part of your life. And that's no, fine, man. You no. can want what you want. I'm not the judge, but a lot of people go, he ain't compromising. He's got incredible things all around him. I do. And resources you, and everything. And the, why am I the, complaining? You're you exactly the, right. You got the Yeti mic. You got the, the, you got the best. <laughs> I, I'm just mad. I don't even know. Man. This mic was from Amazon for $20. Thank you. But it looks like a really good mic for it what does. you do. I don't know. I mean, I think you bought the best in breed. I, I gotta get. I gotta get all the skein off my camera tomorrow. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know, man. You know, it's all oh, relative, game. right? Oh, I get game. it. I, I get it. You, you want the the high end duck boat, the high end truck. I get it. And you should, right? I mean, you want your customers to uh, be bathed in the lap of luxury. At when you would you buy higher end stuff, you could charge more. Mm -hmm. You could be the premier outfitter. It's not a bad vision. You're going to be, you know, maybe guiding a bunch of rich people mm. and dudes that'll push you to an end that you don't want to be pushed to laying down in that $65,000 flat coffin on the water, shooting ducks in 30 degree <laughs> weather. <laughs> oh. I don't know. That's all good. As long as they tip you a thousand dollars a trip, you're happy. You know, I'm not getting that. Brand new Denali for a few years, bro. I'm going to run this. Actually, the Ford goes in the shop tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Listen, if we're driving around that big boy truck of yours, I'll follow you wherever we're going because I'm not driving in that. At 8 a.m., I got to be at the Ford dealership tomorrow morning again. You going to get a lift kit for it? No. You're, you're... <laughs> Just another $1,000 repair bill, bud. It's cheaper than buying, buying a new one. That's what you keep saying. <laughs> I know. Well, just buy a new one. We're ten grand in for the year, but on uh, well, in the last two years, probably. Remember that spring so, six thousand dollar hit. I do. Yeah, what do they take? What do they got? Take they, this thing out of the engine, and you only get back there. You got a three hour, three days of labor here, and then how old's the truck? Twenty seventeen. Five years. How many miles? One fifty five. One fifty five. Okay, so think of it this way. If you bought the big boy Denali truck, you'd be out 90 grand, 70, because you would have sold your truck for 20 or 25. Yeah, right. Right. So I and, get it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm 70, 70 grand in the stock market. You know, OK, you're sucking wind now, but you did pretty good a couple years ago. Here we go. We're back on the Tinder thing. <laughs> what words trigger it? Is it just I, rando? I don't think it's words, dude. Is it big boy? I think it was big boy. We said big boy Denali and they like the big boy. They heard it. And then the bots come out or is it the soliloquy? Is it delivering what you want? <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> is it silicone or soliloquy? Or is it that? Why am I saying soliloquy? Soliloquy, 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 silicroam. Wasn't silicroam a film? The silicroam. Similochrome. I'm missing the M. Some millichrome. Is it two M? How do you spell it? 
I'm starting to get a little spun up, so maybe it's All time right. to end the show. You could yep, tell. I'm right? going to continue to read through the New York Freshwater. Still love the chrome. See if Some there's anything chrome. about fish ladders in here again for the third time. That's pretty crazy. Can't find it. Don't they have it online? You it's can just, just throw it, it into a document. Couldn't you just like copy everything, paste it into a Word document, do a search? I'm just putting together my court case. You have to film it if you can, man. You might go to jail for filming it, but if you could sneak a camera in, that'd be incredible. Then you'd have another problem on your hand. Don't do that. You can't bring a camera into court? I don't know. Every court has a different rule. Some states you can film in the courtroom. Some states you can't. I don't. Oh, here it is. I'm sorry. I found it. No (laughs) fishing. Yeah, no fishing near a fish ladder of within 100 yards. Unless there's a cable that's unmarked, that's 30 <laughs> yards, and there's 80 other people fishing within 100 yards of the ladder. Oh, okay. Right. From Moscow. Yes. <laughs> or, or whatever you said. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. He's Kent Collins is drinking a bottle of simulacrum right now. <laughs> Oh. You could bottle that stuff up. Yeah, man. Weren't we supposed to sign off like five minutes ago? What happened? Well, we're just talking, dude. I know we are. All right, uh, man. Well, have a good night, man. Just uh, vision. Just vision. Look up the Ford Velociraptor, if I only. Can, Depends. No. Brooks Robinson says, hey, hey, Brooks, he'll go film it for you, man. I'm can sure you, he Brooks. Will. Can you film in New York in, co- in the courtroom? He doesn't even know if you can fish near a ladder or not. Oh. And he's if a anyone guide. knows, he should know. Yeah, he's a guide. He's a guide. Mm-hmm. And? Ned's in bed already. <laughs> Crap, <he goes. laughs> I am too. <laughs> yes. All right, man. I'm going to watch uh, Better Call Saul. You're going to fish the 30th like to... Shamo Bay. 30th. I'll be back home on the 30th. In time for the Halloween special. Mm-hmm. What's Cole dressing up as? Police officer. How odd. That's what he wanted to be. I just don't understand that. Okay. <laughs> well, he was a pirate last, or no. He was an Indian last last Halloween. All right. So. Cool, man. Does he still want to be an airplane? Yeah. Or a tractor. Uh, airplane. He's still on the airplane thing. Pilot. Yeah, I, I thought it was just an airplane. I asked him about the pilot when I was there. He said airplane. He I was know. being goofy. He's goofy. Especially when I get around. He acts all crazy. I know. All right. Yeah, okay. man, Tim. Oh, a new season's coming out, Tim. Holy moly, man. Wow. All right, bro. Is that it? Uh-huh. We stayed on longer than we talked about. That's for sure. Just in case everybody wants to know, are we giving it everything we got? We talked about it. <laughs> we talked about an hour show. You're like, yeah, we'll stay on for an hour or so tonight. Okay. Man, it's uh, three hours later. The auction We're- will probably be in November. If somebody asked about that. Ah, this seems random. I don't think anybody did. <laughs> it's going to be the mega auction of all auctions. Mm-hmm. Is is Jimmy Big Time going to be the auctioneer? Maybe. If you could raise that, you're going to pay him this time. I don't want any arguments or breakups again over payment terms. Dude, you're Maybe. the one that put that bug in his ear. Dude, negative. I'm the guy who. Got everybody back together. Just remember that. <sighs> we've we've never had an issue. Now you're just fibbing. It's oh, my God. Fibbing. Should we bring Jimmy big time on and have him say exactly how he felt when he felt it? There's a pond on that property, bud. Oh, now you got to get it. It looks more like a ditch. Ditch. Could, could there be ducks in it? Maybe. Wood ducks. Man, that's nice. Walk Built out in backyard. 85. Mm. The pond or the house? The house. Okay. Needs some work. You're just staying there short term, bro. Mm. 
It's just wood and walls and a door and windows, man. Does it have heat and AC and a working sink and a stove you can cook on? You don't need the Viking stove. Save your money for the, the Viking the, stove. All you need, save your money for the toys. Mm -hmm. Just go in and live in it. Put, slap some paint on the walls. Bring in JP's crew. Give him five grand and tell him what to do. <laughs> right. Right. Don't they help bros out? Mm -hmm. built, right. What else do you need out there? You need a driveway to store your boat or maybe a couple other toys. You got ample space for other things if you need it. Can you put up a temporary, like, you know, shelter if you had a couple other toys that you bought on the cheap? You know, one of those things that they don't look great, but so what? It's undercover. Come on, man. You got to think like that for a second. You got to get to New York. You have to get to New York. I'm I'm there. So listen, guys. No, I week, know you're I know you're there, but you're not there until you have a place to live. I ain't worried about that. I'll find a place by July. Oh, you will. One good thing, Eric, is I was gonna the realtor at this greenhouse, I was gonna ask her if they yeah. wouldn't mind if we didn't take the uh if we didn't move in until uh March first. And she said people that do could that be all people do that all the time. People do it all the time. All the time. But I wouldn't yep. mind getting in there. I know I understand if I get in there now, I got, you know, two thousand dollar a month payment for a while. But I'd love to be able to get in there and start, you know, getting it ready, doing some work. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't get that, but okay. Painting the walls, getting the garage. Dude, I gotta put a build a studio. Yeah. Okay, so there's gonna be some cost. Or you could get a studio built in the day with your crew, JP's crew. But you got to like pitch in next year for them. JP doesn't really like. Ah, so I, I, well, are you in busy that? For me. No, not J. It's JP and the crew and the crew. I'm not in the group. But, oh, you got to get. How do you get in the group? You got to have skills. You have to know how to use a uh, saw. You know. We so, could use a saw. Bro. You don't. You don't know how to use a saw. We had a. I like we it. had a towel holder in the bathroom yesterday get Fall pulled off. off the wall. And, and so this is the third time I put it up in the last three years. So now I get serious. I get some real good, that stuff in that plastic jar that you put a spatula in, slap it on the drywall, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Spackling, patching that up. Patching it. But the hole's so big and it's just falling through. So now I'm getting really mad. So now I'm literally grabbing it with my fingers and I'm just stuffing it in the holes. <laughs> that's, just that's, falling. that's not, that's not so going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going like, to work. You know what? So then I roll it up like a big old. Well, wait a minute. Why don't you move the towel? Snake. I can find a freaking stud. Now I, now I move up because I got to patch the hole first. So now I'm sticking it in there. Finally, I keep just going back and forth, back and forth and back and forth. And finally it's perfect. They make the so, mess stuff. Hear this story out, dude. It's kind All of funny. Right, man. I'm sorry, man. Okay. So now I got the whole patch. I'm like, cool. I'm like, <laughs> screw that hanger. I'm going to get a brand new one. I'm going down to Lowe's because I need some stuff anyways, right? Yeah. I need some paint because I got to match this paint up in the bathroom. Well, it's a different in the light. It looks, it's not the same as the rest of the house. And anyway, so I mixed the wrong, I bought the wrong paint. Then I let it dry. I realized, well, there's, it's a big difference in the paint right. color. I now go you got to paint the whole bathroom. I go downstairs. I found another one. Slap it on. Now it's too bright, too white. Yeah. I'm running out of options and patience. A couple hours go by. I'm like, fuck it. I got some white spray paint flat in the garage. <laughs> I, I serious. I swear to God, I did this. I go up there. I spray. Now the marks are pretty big. Yeah. Both sides of this. <laughs> so now I spray paint it. And of course, the fumes, right? Oh, yeah. Nobody's yeah. happy. Nobody's happy. That's so, not So good. now I finally get it spray painted. It looks like it's going to work. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the new buyer is going to come in. They won't even know this. We'll put some towels over it. You know? Sure. But now I'm like, okay, now I have to attach this new towel holder to the wall. Yeah. So I go down to Lowe's and I, I find the perfect one. <laughs> I go back and I move it, right? I'm not going to put over those same old holes. <laughs> a little higher sure and uh, <laughs> uh so for some reason i had my drill bit suck it wouldn't fit 
the screwdriver because I wanted to take the screwdriver to start the hole to put the plastic thing in to hold the screw in eventually. Yeah, the anchor wall anchor. Yes, yep. the anchor wall. But the screwdriver, the screw wasn't. So then I just took the drill and the the drill with the Phillips screw and I just yeah. drilled into the popped, wall. Sure, popped a hole, which yep. I think worked. Okay, made the right. hole. Yeah. Then I popped that thing in the plastic yep. thing. Yep, the anchor. And, then, and so this this thing was weird. It, it had a clip. It was a metal piece, and so I attached it, but then I couldn't get. Then you put the pole in, and you have to take an Allen wrench and tighten the bottom. That's right. That's but right. I had it top reversed, oh, and geez. it took me a good hour. And then the thing still moves just a little bit. It, that bother you? You can never get it tight. So, Sucks. I'm not if, good with tools, bro. If the if the builders do their job right, man, they mount stuff to the studs, or they put extra, you know, pieces of two by four attached to a stud where you're going to mount your hardware, and it never, it just can't pull uh, out because you, you you've mounted it to wood. Mm-hmm. It sucks, man. Towel bars that are mounted to drywall just absolutely suck. Yeah, we've all pulled one out. It sucks. Good. Yeah, you ain't the only one, bro. That's fought with a towel rack. Pain in the. I'm not yeah. saying it. crazy, man. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, Travis Wise, he's giving you some good advice. Then the curtain, advice. so the curtain <laughs> fell off. The shower the curtain, curtain? Rod fell off. Oh. No, a different a, 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 a curtain over a window upstairs. Was it a tension rod or was it mounted? No, it's I got to do that same thing. I got to put that oh, spackle man. on it. And uh, did they just fall off magically? Is it the soliloquy? Or do you think you got some kids uh, wrangling know. stuff down? They destroy everything. I know, dude. Rugrats. Hmm. What are you going to do, man? It's crazy, man. All right. We best go, bud. We best go, man. All we'll right, man. Tomorrow. All right, brother. Peace, man. See Let's everybody, man. Everybody, Great everybody, man. Please. And until next time. See you on the water. Peace. All right. I'm not staying on after this. I got to go to bed. Me, bro. me too, bro. All Just right. leave the studio.